If you eat out, you're not going to get lean, and there's three main reasons why. So if you want to get lean, don't eat out. What do you guys think the reasons are? I feel like that's a direct Ooh. shot at me. No. <laughs> All of us eat out. I love eating time. out, but yeah. No. Kick a guy when he's down. Man. No. Kick a guy when he's why? down. Why? What's going on? I mean, we got we did my. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we'll go over all that stuff. But first, I want to hear uh, what your three are. I mean, obviously, um, the first one that comes to mind for me in this situation is even somebody who is tracking, like mm -hmm. I was tracking, uh, with that many meals eating out. Uh, there's so much room for air that uh, you know, and if you're trying to hover around maintenance or just a slight deficit. Uh, that that what you think is a deficit or a maintenance could very easily tip into a surplus. And in the context of one day, because let's say you had one day of you had to eat out, uh, not so bad. But when you look at um, what I just did was in a four weeks period of time, three occasions where I traveled for uh, on the shortest two days to four days, so, you it's know, like half the time. Yeah. So almost half the time <clears throat> I'm eating in an airport, I'm eating at a restaurant, I'm eating out and I'm, you know, oh, that that's about that much this and trying to get, and, and I'm pretty good trying at to that. make healthy choices still. Oh yeah. And still, yeah. And, and I would consider all of it uh healthy choices, right? For the most part, there was a, uh, when we went to Sonoma, I talked about eating some popcorn and I had my first like candy bar in forever. Other than that, like it's, it was pretty dialed. And, and I like to think that um, I'm pretty good at looking at food on my plate and go, oh, that's about six ounces. Oh, that's about four ounces because I've weighed so so many meals, yet still um, was enough uh, off to not see the results that I Well, that's just it. I think the first thing is that things are not uh, weighed and measured um, accurately. You know, they're not going to give you six ounces exactly, eight ounces exactly. <laughs> They're going to use... Uh, it's very misleading. Yeah, they're not going to do a, a tablespoon of olive oil or butter. Um, it's going to be off by, you know, depending on the size of the meal, two, 300 calories. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, if you eat out twice in a day, I mean, that could easily take you from maintenance or deficit to a surplus. Well, I mean, their entire job is to make it taste good. Yes. And you yeah. can't, like, deny 100%. that fact because people come back because of the flavors and the experience. And it's not conducive to, like, trying to make sure all the macros are, like, super tight. And, like, the the kitchen in the back, the guys aren't, like, measuring it out, like, very specifically. It's I've seen it all, dude. So it's definitely not, like, what's on paper. Have I ever told you guys a story, like, when this, like, this big aha moment happened for me? Uh, I, had a, I had a girlfriend that was a waitress at Outback. And it was, this was during my time of being a personal trainer. I was in the middle of like, in fact, I think we were doing one of those competitions with my staff. So I was weighing, tracking everything. And I got like a, a plain steak from there and I'm like tracking it. And she goes, oh, did you include the butter or what like that? And I said, oh, I put a you know a tablespoon of olive oil. I figured they used something like that. She's like, oh no, they take a half a cube of butter and <laughs> yeah. drop it on the steak. Yeah. yeah. And, and melt like, the whole thing in there. Are you kidding me? So she literally, I, I did not believe her. It was, I thought she was exaggerating. She took a picture the next time the chef was cooking the steak to show me yeah. like, and I went, holy shit. To your, and to <laughs> Justin's point, like they, the chefs aren't going back. They're going, oh, we got to make sure this is exactly a tablespoon. No. They're like, I, this needs to taste good. Yeah. The more the butter, the better. The more oil, the better. And so they tend to go heavy handed because it's in their best interest to, and so point is, you know, one meal here or there, oh, it's okay. You, you, you could be off a couple hundred calories, but you string enough days together mm -hmm. of that and still making what you would consider healthy choices, right? Like I'm, I've yeah. made healthy choices, but when you're eating out, there's so many variables that you just can't, it, it can't account the for. The first time this for me was apparent was, you know, back, back in the day as an early trainer, we used to use, we had, we had books with calorie counts and. This is how much a calorie potato. CalorieKing.com. Calorie King, right? Uh, this, is, this is how much a potato is. This is how much whatever. And I remember, I don't remember what the calories were for a banana. And it said oh, medium yeah. banana. And, and I, you know, look at bananas. I figure medium means it's in the middle size of all the bananas at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then I looked at the weight and I weighed a banana. I'm like, this banana is so much bigger than what they counted as a it's medium. It's a gorilla banana. Yeah. It was like twice as many calories yeah. as it's what like I thought. What you think is a medium is bigger than what those calorie books count as a, a la the largest you can right, do. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So you have to look at the weight. And I had never weighed them. I looked at it and said, this is medium. This is, this is your typical sweet potato. This is your typical chicken breast. Then you weigh it and it's like, this is as much as three of what they would consider <laughs> to be typical. And the calories ca uh, add up, especially with oil. Uh, you know, a tablespoon of olive oil is, what, 100 calories? 
Oh yeah. So someone throw you know. By the way, eat have a salad That's with sneaky. one tablespoon versus three tablespoons of olive oil. You can't tell the difference. Mm -mm. Yeah. But one is three hundred calories. One's one hundred calories. And if you eat out every single day, this adds up. This all adds up. And then what happens, especially if you're consistent with everything that you do, it leaves you in this like mystery space of like, what is going on? Why isn't it working for me? I brought my calories down, right? But you actually, you didn't. You actually didn't. You just don't realize it. And the FDA, I know that they add, uh, they actually allow for- 20%. A 20% margin. Mm -hmm. 20%, right? So if, it, if a meal is- 1500 calories it could be as much as 300 calories off in, in, in my opinion yeah it, it's almost certainly as if you're in the business of selling a health food product you're in the business of marketing it how low of calorie how low of fat it is so it's in your best interest to push to 19.9 percent .9 off because you yeah. can make your product look healthier lower calorie which there's been plenty of, there's been protein bars like uh, Detour was sued for this, for pushing those limits so far that it wasn't just 20% off, it was like 50% off and they got in trouble because I think it's just common practice that when you're in the health food space, you're trying to promote to people that are watching well, calories, watching fat. Let me help you with that, right? So mm -hmm. the incentives, uh, the market incentives are as follows, right? The incentive is make it as tasty as possible, but make the calories look as low as possible. I don't care what you're eating, by the way. It could be a high calorie food. It could be a cake or a pizza. If they're going to list the calories, if a consumer is going to care at all, they're going to prefer a lower calorie count. That's yeah. just the way it can, all, all consumers, whether you want to lose weight or not, most people know that higher calories is probably not as good as lower calories. So that what they're going to do is post the 20% under That's right. in calories and then have it actually be 20% higher in flavor, which includes typically palatable ingredients, which are typically fats, carbohydrates, a little extra sodium, right? Which they could also be 20% off. Mm -hmm. So you're actually way off. Yeah. It's, it says it's a thousand when it's closer to 1400. And it, that's the incentive. The incentives are in that direction and they're allowed to do that. So when you go and you eat out the restaurant, I mean, they don't care. Nobody's checking by the way. I, no. I, I, how many FDA well, <laughs> people are going around? Remember when they start making uh, uh, restaurants post uh, all of their yeah. food items and like how many calories? It was so great because I had been saying this a long time because I get a group of ladies that would come in and order these like ridiculous salads and it had like buttermilk mm. um, croutons in it. Yeah. It had like cheese, had like, you know, the, the ranch dressing and yeah. it was more than the burger. Like it, and fries, it was more calories, and they were th their minds were blown. On I was like, I was trying to tell you. If you yeah. go to Jack in the Box, you could probably look this up right now, and and look up at their Southwest Chicken Salad. It is higher calorie than their ultimate double bacon cheeseburger and fries. <laughs> How wild is that? Yeah, you have. So you How have, mad are you if you don't realize that, <laughs> yeah. bro? You know, tons of people don't realize it. They just think that they're making the better choice because they're buying this chicken salad, not realizing there is 800 calories in the dressing alone, and then the bacon and everything else, cheese and everything else that they pile on the salad boost that thing well over a thousand calories you just and you think you're you're doing a good job what's funny is that when i so i never track never 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 track you guys know that i don't really uh, care one way or another i, I maintain a relatively lean uh you know uh, physique or whatever so i don't care but when i stop eating out typically i'll stop eating out because my gut health will be off a little bit that's my motivator sometimes it's because i feel like i'm being frivolous with money so i'm like ah, i should just probably eat at home more every single time i eat uh, food from home versus eating out. You get leaner. Leaner. Yeah. Every time. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I'm not even, tr I'm not trying to eat less. I'm eating what looks like the same amount of food. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just end up getting yeah, leaner yeah. every single time. Yeah. And I know why. It's because yeah. and I'm, I'm less inflamed too. It's yeah, like dude. It's just way, so it's like one of those things that, you know, you're, you're so much better off not eating out. That alone, that and avoiding heavily processed foods. Usually if I had clients do those two things and do nothing else, I would see on average between 10, 15 pound uh, fat loss mm -hmm. on average. That yeah. was always across the board. Uh, what I would see. Yeah. Speaking no. of calories, by the way, I brought this up a long time ago. It was one of my favorite uh, like studies in human behavior. There was a, it was, I want to say a city or a town that passed an ordinance where all the restaurants had to label calories uh, and then they tracked yeah. it. I remember this to see <laughs> it made people eat more. Yeah, they tracked it to see, oh, this is this will make people eat less if they just knew if they were more informed. And then at the end of the study, they found that it's people actually three hundred calories more. That's right. That's exactly more. what it is. Yeah. That's why that why why people it happened justified was it. people would go like, Well shit, if I just get the 
the double bacon cheeseburger is almost the same as the chicken sandwich. I'd yeah. rather have the double yeah, bacon cheeseburger. Yeah, that's another 300 calories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they would justify the <laughs> Human couple behavior hundred more. Is so funny, I, it is funny that that's how we that's how we think. Like Cracks that. me up. Yeah. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps. Just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right. Back to the show. Speaking of food, by the way, have you guys, uh, are you guys familiar with turkeyflation? Have you heard of this? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you just coin that or did you yeah. actually read that I, somewhere? I think I might have coined it, but I, or I I, it. I'm sure it exists, but this is the price of turkeys. So every Thanksgiving, right? Turkeys, uh, this like, it's a huge thing. Like, everybody oh, buys yeah, turkeys, it's, right? It's the staple centerpiece. And if you look at the price of turkeys every Thanksgiving, people will use that as a way to kind of talk about the you know inflation and how much more expensive things are and this right. and that so i had doug pull up the cost of a turkey in what year was that was it 2019 2020? yeah 2019 so 20 so five years ago so not that long ago so five years ago a turkey versus today yeah you guys want to yeah. guess what the difference was uh per percentage Wait, wise how, per pound okay are we, do we get any numbers to start with like, how about just a like straight up what's what's a 24 25 pound turkey well, how, then about how much was it per pound in 2019 89 cents a pound. Okay, so 89 okay, so cents. How much? 89 cents then. A pound. How much more do you think it is five dollar years later? $1.30. Dollar thirty. <laughs> what do you think? Is yeah, like almost two bucks, let's say. All right. So I went on the Walmart website and it's two dollars and fifty eight cents a pound. It went from oh eighty nine three hundred times? That's a yes, yeah, like a two hundred and ninety. That's a three hundred percent mark. Yeah. Holy oh my yes, god, dude. dude. Wow. Yes. In five years? In five years, the price of a turkey went up. Three, almost 300%. Wow. That dude. is, and turkeys haven't become more rare, everybody. It's because it's, <laughs> no, no, no. It's because we've, we've messed yeah, up our I mean, money. With people got to be feeling that, you know? It's, oh, well, I mean, they, of course they do. Uh, you know, what's funny is when the, when they, they put out the numbers and they're like, inflation's actually, it's only 4%. What are you guys counting? Yeah. What, are they, what are they measuring? They took all the things that matter out. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. took all the yeah, they they got got gas and stuff. fuel. Yeah. yeah. Groceries, nah. Yeah. 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 What what are they what are they checking? Electronics? Like yeah. shit that nobody cares yeah. about. Like, yeah. what is it? Wow. And here's another thing they do with inflation is like now they say, Oh yeah, inflation's only three percent now. Well, it was twelve percent before or whatever it was. They don't they don't tell you that it's three percent above Plus. that new level that they achieved yeah. when they had yeah. the last right. inflationary run. Right, right. Yeah. So right. it's not like your prices are going down. No. Yes, maybe inflation is going up lower now, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so We're all it's screwed still. It's, it's, it's slowing down how painful. That is it, so crazy. By the way, it's Walmart's numbers, and I'm glad Doug brought up Walmart because Walmart they do an exceptional job oh, yeah. at keeping prices down. They fight to keep those prices. And in like, turkeys, here's decent. why I like, this is why I think it's interesting to use turkeys uh, to look at inflation. Uh, the margins on turkeys are low, especially for Thanksgiving. Because if you're a, if you're a grocery store- Is that true? Well, yes. So you know how uh, Costco- yeah, yeah, I know Costco does the chicken move, yes. right? That's, so if so you're a grocery a, store, you don't want expensive turkeys. You want cheap turkeys so people buy the turkey and then buy everything else. And then you make yeah, money on everything right, else. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody's getting turkey. We you know need that. the accessories. Yeah. Yes. Everybody's going to get turkey. So that's like with the margins being squeezed. It's a very competitive market. And yet it went up almost- 300%. That's wild. Damn. You know, every year our, our partners, uh, Butcher Box, always do something cool for Thanksgiving. What are they doing this year? They're giving for? away a turkey. Are they giving away a turkey? Yeah, if you get a box from Butcher Box uh, during this period of time, you can get a whole turkey included in your box uh, for free. Oh, there you awesome. go. Yeah, plus, a, plus good, $20 off, right? Good excuse to just start with them right there and themselves, get yourself yeah. a turkey. What's the size? Did they tell you what the size of the turkey is? I believe it's around 10 pounds, <laughs> 10 yeah. to 12. I'm doing, what are you guys doing this year? I'm going to try three turkeys this year. What? what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we all, obviously, we, everyone, like every year. all different? Or? Yeah, all the three different, that's what I mean. So, and I'll be responsible for two of the three. So, uh, so once I had the deep fried one at your house, that was it. Really so we always, we always deep fry that's now, which is what I do. Um, then my brother cool. does the oven. And now this year, I'm also going to smoke. Mm. Uh, so I'm going to smoke, deep fry, nice. and oven. I'm going to do all three. So this will How be, long is that going to take? I have no idea. This will be my first. I'm actually going to hit up my buddy Kendrick, right? Or my barbecue guy. Uh, and, and, nice. and get a recipe from him to kind of tell me how I should smoke it. Uh, and he, I know he cooks on a Traeger like I do. So I'll, I'll find out from him what the best uh, way to cook it is. And then I'm going to do uh, all the above. So was be, turkey the original? Was that actually what the pilgrims ate? Or was this a, a, a very that's smart how the story marketing goes. ploy? That's how the story yeah, I think goes. that might be a marketing thing. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's really like, smart. Yeah, what if, you're like the, if you're like the turkey lobby, whoever invented that, like, the, oh, this is the time you eat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, brilliant. back in the day, it was wild turkeys. Very different than the uh, bread ones we have now. Wild turkey is probably gross. 
we have them up in the hills where I live. Tastes gamey. Yeah, they, they walk around and they don't make it. Uh-huh. You know, they, they don't look fat. Good. And everybody's trash, dude. Huh? Have you seen? They these? eat trash. Yeah, these, I didn't these, know that. Uh, they knock them over. I don't know if they eat it, but uh. it's, it, they're everywhere. It's just like it, it, they're pests, you know. I, like, I'm not let them go too long. Are. I'm not a fan of turkey. I don't really tell you. It's not that good. It's, you don't like turkey? Not really. I'm I had it when you deep fried it. it I'm was with good. you on that. But oh, I not really like turkey. That's interesting. You, guys you like, like it? I I like turkey so much that I guess, and maybe this is part of. Are you going to say something stupid right now? Don't no. tell me you like it better than beef. Well, there's a lot. Oh my I, God. I started to eat Justin, things like like ground turkey tacos <laughs> over uh, beef tacos because of how how easy digesting it was. It was I was it was easier on my stomach. I can eat eight turkey tacos versus like six beef tacos, <sighs> and beef tacos would mess me up a little bit. Really? Yeah. God. Oh, look at that. It's I mean, likely ground turkey meat's pretty. It's good. likely that the pilgrims ate turkey, so it's, we don't even know if they did. It's likely. This is brilliant marketing from the turkey lobby. Is there a turkey <laughs> lobby? <laughs> yeah, yeah probably. It? The turkey union, big turkey. <laughs> <laughs> they probably ate like little pheasants or like some tiny birds, you know. Like, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. No, I'm not a big fan. I don't like turkey. If I do eat turkey, it's the dark meat. The white is just so it's so dry. It's not that uh, good. I like the white meat. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With a little bit of a little bit. I mean, I, my mom guy. makes incredible gravy too. So a little bit of gravy over the top of it with her homemade stuffing. We do the stuffing where you actually stuff the turkey and cook it inside the turkey. And like oh, I was just Stuffing is good. I love Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving meals is... Well, I'm just happy that... So, because my family's Italian, we have also lots of Italian food, which is good, because it's way better than... Do you guys do that? You don't do, like, a full-on traditional... We do traditional, and we throw in, like, pasta al forno, which is, it's like a a southern Italian dish. Yeah. It's like this baked pasta that's so good. Mm. We have that every Thanksgiving. So, Uh, that's what I look forward to. So, Katrina's family does, like, uh, we, we do, like... The traditional stuff with like enchiladas and stuff like that too. So there's other stuff going oh, on. Homemade, uh-huh. mm. oh, homemade yeah. tamales are the best. Yeah, yeah. We'll have tamales. We'll have enchiladas. We'll have stuff like that. We do that. like yeah. straight up white people, you know, <laughs> main, food. We have t- main <laughs> main <sandwich>. Jello, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Marshmallow yams, yeah, yeah, dude. Marshmallow yams, Jello oh, salad. Oh, oh. All the stuff in the '60s that you uh, wish died, like casseroles. Yeah. And hey, stuff. I cranberries up. out of can. Yeah. I, yeah, I showed this. That's to my why I've never been excited about it. I mean, I do like turkey on some level, but it's never cooked right so we're actually smoking like it, we're buying it from a barbecue place that's already smoked and uh, all that and then bringing it and oh. then just just oh, to make it easier speaking Smart. of barbecue so you got you know i was in austin last week right because i was on a, a podcast uh which was you know transform podcast was really good um and uh i got to have barbecue i had a little gap between finishing the podcast ah, and such a treat there oh nice. man well, you had some barbecue i did bro nice. did you yes. go to one of our spots no i didn't go to la barbecue now i can't remember the name hmm. it was a dip blacks, blacks? oh yeah, yeah. Blacks. yeah yes bro. it's just as good I heard. That, that yeah some people will argue blacks is better it yeah. was really good yeah, yeah. it was it's it, it's i don't know if it's better than la barbecue i haven't had them too like close enough together to know because it was so long ago yeah that i had la barbecue it was so good I went there and I took the drive. We have, I had a My nephew lives there and he would tell you blacks, but I like, we all, lo- I mean, we did both. So we've, we've Terry all blacks? loved Law Terry Barbecue. Blacks. Terry Blacks. I think that was the name of it. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah. By the way, I got to give a shout out to a gym in Austin because they're terrible. Not because they're good, but because they're terrible. <laughs> okay. I, and I'm, dis- I'm yeah. disappointed. I'm disappointed. Because they didn't know you? No, that's not why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, this I walked guy in. a wife beater. Right? Yeah. 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 Wait. How about now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm the mayor here. What's happening? No. Wait. No. How about now? That's not why. <laughs> no, I go in there. First off, I meet. I think I wrote the guy's name. There was a trainer in there that. Damn, you're gonna roll him under the bus by no, name. No, no, no. This guy was cool. This guy was oh, cool. Okay, okay. No, there was a trainer in there that I uh, that I met. Eddie, I think was his name. Was cool guy. He he does listen to the show. He actually trains people uh in rehab, which was kind of cool. So it was really nice too. Oh yeah. But besides that, so I went to the local Golds. Because I'm like, Gold's Gym. You can't go wrong with a Gold's Gym, right? Yeah, usually. This, this is the Gold's on 6th Street. Like I said, I really annoyed the show. Very specific. Yeah, yeah. Very specific. I go in there, and three times this happened. Three times. I have never, I haven't experienced this lack of gym etiquette uh, in a long time, and I had it three separate times. So I'm in there, and I'm, you know, you know I'm trying to work out, whatever, and I wanted to do a machine workout because I was tired from travel and all that stuff. So I see people, you know, using machine over here. So I walk up to the dude and I'm like, hey man, you mind if I jump in? And he's like, no, no I got like three more sets. Oh, he I'm told like, you no. Yeah, bro. And I looked at him I'm like, okay, whatever. So I went off and found something else to do. Another machine, another person using machine. And I'm like, hey, and he did his, he just finished his set. He's resting. Hey, you mind if I jump in? No, nah, man, I got like two more sets. By the third person, third person did this to me. I looked wow. at him and I shook my head and I'm like, this is crazy. Are these all college kids or are they like- No, regular people. 
Okay. Who wow. who taught these people gym etiquette? I can't believe that. Obviously, nobody. a machine too. It's not like I'm like unloading and loading a bar. It's a freaking weight stack. Just move yeah. the pin. Yeah. And dude's sitting on there wrestling. No, Wild. I said no. Three separate people. No. That, not letting damn, the same workout. <laughs> Embarrassing. Yeah, that's, for goals. That's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Teach your people. Yeah. Regulate Teach your shit together. Oh man, if when I was when I was a gym manager, I. Uh, I saw that happen a couple times in yeah. front of me and I went over and I said, you need to get off the machine and let him jump in. That's like straight up yeah. gym etiquette. You let yeah. the person jump that's in. Tacky. Well, yeah. I was wondering because 6th Street is like very young and, and like that's where everybody parties. Yeah, it's all the bars. So it's, it's probably like, yeah, you get a lot of riffraff. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, prob that's probably what you're dealing with. Yeah. Were they young? Do you remember if they were young? Uh, no, they weren't young. They looked like they're like in their maybe 30s. Okay. Yeah, so not I like to say riffraff. Yeah. <laughs> scrim, scrim. That's how you know we're old. Well, <laughs> 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 yeah. you know how I, I know mean, we're old is fucking. I can't get. I can't string four workouts together without fucking hurting myself. Yeah, right what's now. happening uh, with you? Dude, it's like so. What's happening, dude? It's uh, it's really um, it's really frustrating, and it it makes it fucking. So do you know, you think you tore something? Yeah. Huh? I don't know. I don't think I tore. I think I strained it. Um, it is bruised though, so it was enough enough bruising. It wasn't as bad a bruising as the the pack by nowhere near that. Um, uh, but it's it's painful enough that here I am, what, three, four days later, four yeah, four days later, and I'm still in pain to the touch. So it's not it's not like a And both of them real time like video yeah, captured it. Yes, so I, I And I mean I and I do brutal. I will say this, I do appreciate uh the the you know the support and the people that have like reached out. Like I really thought I was gonna get like it's on YouTube, right? So I thought, oh man, this is gonna be bring on all the trolls and yeah, all the stuff. Sure. I was gonna, I was just like this is I and to be documenting it is what I think is really because if this happened to me, uh even the first one, I would just back off. I just back off, take it easy for yeah. a while, and it's like, you know, I'll just cruise and till my body fully heals and when I come back I'll be smarter about it. But I've been on this mission, you know, to to document all this. And obviously, I'm trying to show the audience, like, this this great aesthetic change yeah. in a short period of time. So I'm, I'm highly motivated to, to keep going and keep pushing. And it just really sucks to uh, to get this now where it's like the pack has caused all kinds of shoulder stuff. So I just, like, I can't, I can't do a lot of chest and... My mm. movement doesn't feel right up there. Then I did the the quad, so I limited my you know squatting and so like that. Then I did the hamstring. It's just like man, I'm, I'm gonna be doing calves and forearms for the rest of this this <laughs> this series, dude. Like join wow. me, join me on the YouTube series where I build my calves and well, my my <laughs> a new program. Yeah, 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 calves yeah, and forearms. yeah, yeah. You know, so, so all, like, all joking aside, uh, like Popeye. I I really think we should we should call some of our friends. Well, I'll give you you want to hear Brink's breakdown. So Brink, I know he's a, breaking down your technique and form. I no, get no, 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 he didn't. He didn't do that. He didn't do that at all. Oh, really? me, I, yeah, I thought this was really valuable, so we okay. should we should share it. Okay. Um, and I and shout out to Doctor Brink, right? I really appreciate him, and like he's and one I one of the best function. Like, I, it, I also appreciate him handling my ego with with uh, kit gloves too. You know, what I'm saying like I, like last thing I need from fucking yeah. any of my friends or anybody is like maybe tell like you know it's so annoying when someone's like, well, I can help you out. I can tell you how to. I, I can show you some technique on how you can deadlift better. And stuff. I was just like, that's not what I need from fucking people right now. It's like people trying to tell me that shit but brink uh messaged me right after uh it happened and basically kind of sent me like a, a, a protocol uh of how to take care of uh myself going forward so this is what uh he sent over to me he says popped left hammy that's the side you had the problem with the internal rotation if i remember correct which is correct remember that it wasn't the deadlift that created the issue it wasn't a thing and it just decided enough was it was <clears throat> It was a time thing, and it just decided enough was enough. This is a great way to, I'm sure you're doing this already, is to show all the uh, ever, uh, show how we're all humans and things happen. How do you pivot? But keep your workouts moving forward. You're just an acute rehab scenario for the hamstring. So then he broke down in you know, each step. A, acute, phase, phase zero to one week. Focus on protecting the injury and reducing inflammation, allowing progression when the athlete is pain-free, basic movements like walking and isometrics right now. P B early rehabilitation phases weeks one through three restore range of motion and begin light strengthening exercises progressing only when the athlete achieves pain-free range of motion and tolerance to low level eccentric loads C strengthening phase phases weeks three through six develop hamstring strength and endurance moving to the next phase of the athlete demonstrates symmetrical strength compared to the uninjured leg and can compete uh, complete controlled running drills. So now introduce like some running and stuff. D, 
uh, weeks six through eight. Running and coordination phase. Uh, reintroduce high-speed running and sport-specific coordination drills. Advancing when the athlete can perform sprints and change of direction work at submaximal speeds without compensation or pain. And then final, return to play. You know, eight-plus weeks, achieve full-speed sprinting and strength symmetry, allowing RTP when the athlete can perform all sports specific, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so here's mm -hmm. what I was going to say. Um, and, and, and this is just uh, like total speculation, but you've had a few now tear type injuries in a row that would that would make me want to look at any potential connective issue connective tissue um autoimmune type issue because yeah. it is strange it's yeah. not like one issue it's like in a row a bunch yeah and um maybe we could call some of our friends uh maybe dr lyon or or i don't know and ask them like are there any autoimmune type issues that can affect connective tissue and I know there are, but they typically are characterized by pain and swelling and weakness, which you don't otherwise feel. Like you otherwise don't have yeah. any issues like that. But it is strange. It is. It is, and it's really, it's really weird. It's really strange, frustrating too. Like now, I know I, I, I somewhat progressed fast, but I felt so like I was deadlifting. Um, I know I didn't show you the full set, but like, oh man, it was just I felt strong. The weight was moving smooth. I didn't push crazy. I didn't yeah. go to singles. I mean, I, I pulled a, a weight that I could pull five times. Yeah. So it's not like I was like, you know, PR in or anything right, like that, right. you know, and then three, uh, 365 is not anywhere no. near uh, PR numbers for me. It was the heaviest the hamstring had felt, and it was the second set, right? So the first set, I moved it no problem. What's the second set on the second one, right middle, halfway through, pop, and mm. just like a knife in me. So yeah, it's... Uh, it's really, really frustrating. And then it doesn't help, too, uh, just to pile on. I got my body fat test back um, the next day, uh, which I, you know, I've been setting the the table that I knew this was going to be difficult, right? Like, we flew, th I traveled three times, two injuries now uh, during this, this process. And so it was just like, hopefully, I saw a little bit of progress. Now, the initial number come back, and it's, it's actually really frustrating until you kind of dive in the numbers and then it's not as bad as like you would think. Right. So obviously uh, a, a month of what I consider good eating and training pretty well. Uh, you know, I'd like to see a reduction in body fat. Hopefully I built a little bit of muscle. Hopefully I lost a little, a bit of fat. Um, I previously uh, weighed or measured at 12.4% and I got back 12.7. Yeah. Well, so, you stayed the same. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but what happened was I actually put five pounds on the scale. So I went up five pounds. Lean body mass. Four pounds of it was muscle. One pound was fat. So I'm now up a total of 22 pounds of muscle right. on, the, mm -hmm. on this journey. And I've and on that journey, total of the figure 60 days, I've put 22 pounds of muscle on and I've put one pound of fat on. So what it seems is that the initial rapid gain was was muscle all memory. that muscle, muscle loss totally. that you had. Yeah. 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 That was, that was now you're building muscle quickly still, but in a realistic it is, Yes. Way. More realistic. Yes. Yeah. And so, but I mean, the thing that I really wanted to bring it up to the audience because boy, uh, that could be really discouraging for somebody. Cause even though I know, I know that I was traveling and I factor in a lot of room for error, man, I remember when clients would have stuff like this where they ate good, they tracked food, yeah. they did all the things, they trained, they showed yeah. up. And then if I brought them to their body fat percentage and they saw it stay the same or even go up, yeah. boy, that could really tailspin uh, them out going like, you right in the nuts, oh man. yeah, like what am I doing this all for? And this is why, this makes no sense. All that yeah. work and effort and restricting food and for me to only stay the same, I mean like so... It can get really frustrating, um, but it really highlights how you open this podcast up, which is, you know, th that that many meals out, even though I'm making good choices, there's too much room for error. And it was enough to even when I thought I was in a calorie deficit, it was enough for me to keep me in, in a, a surplus in a surplus. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, looking and now and then. So what do I do, go from now? So now, based off of what I did last month. I had uh, a mini cut in there and the cut ended up not being a cut because of the travel. Right. So I really didn't do cut, which tells me that what I thought was a cut, I could go even aggr more aggressive. So I will reduce calories even lower than what I currently was, but I'm, I'm skating on thin ice because my metabolism isn't where I'd like it to be to put myself in a, in a cut for too long, right. you know? So I don't want to be lower than how's your sleep when you travel. Is it bad too? 
Yeah. Yeah, see, that'll have an effect. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. I just Sleep has a terrible effect. I though. mean, especially when we go across the country. It's like, it's like, no, I know. It's all the factors, right? Yeah. It's like, sleep is not good. Uh, probably, uh, also, hydration probably isn't good. Uh, you know, training volume is non-existent. Um, you know, calorie, you know, to estimate all. like So it's just, I would never, if I was competing, I would never allow myself to have three out of four weeks traveling. Just, it, I'm not stupid. I know that, that mm-hmm. that's not, that's a recipe for setting myself up for about the only way that I would have made that possible. Or if I had to do that in competing days, I would have packed my meals. I would have flown with, which I've done before where it's like, I can't take the chance. What a pain in the butt. Yeah. yeah. How do you do that? You just pack a bag and then you, yeah, you, you, you check fl- it. Yeah. Yeah. You fly those. I used to fly those you six, freeze them? those six pack bags. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I would fly. They keep, you have ice packs. You in little there. ice packs. Yeah. It's got ice packs. You, know, you microwave them in the hotel. Mm-hmm. Oh man. I mean, bro, I used to eat it cold. I mean, that's how, I mean, oh. I, would, I would eat, I would eat cold chicken and sweet yeah, potato all the time. And the, yeah. Oh yeah. When I was like that, well, because like, you had to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's competition. So it's like, I don't, I can do that. I can yeah. do that because of the short period of time in my life, I'm trying to win something. Like, and I'm just not in that mindset. I'm like, of course, I want to show everybody, but I also want to be able to, you know, eat out and do things like that. But it's just not conducive for trying to do what I'm doing, which is trying to build muscle and lose body fat, you know, simultaneously. You have to be perfect. You do. You, re- you really do. It's the Goldilocks zone. Yeah, because you could be in a surplus and go over. You're still in a surplus. Yeah. Right? Deficit, go under. Right. Like if, if, deficit. if I wasn't trying to still reduce body fat, this actually would have been a successful month, right? I added five pounds. Four of it was muscle. Yeah. One was fat. Yeah. We'll yeah. take. I'll take those numbers all, all day. All day. You all, keep I going know, that I'm direction. Like, go right. Back. All right. <laughs> But really, really frustrating. Um, so now with your training, are you going to go, until we figure this out, are you going to go just straight, like, forms, higher reps? Forms, just forms. <laughs> forms. Just trying to invent new moves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what it's crazy is because I'm, I'm hurt on top and bottom. So it's not even like I can bro out and go, like, all chest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would love to go train chest like crazy. So about the only thing that doesn't hurt is is back stuff and, and some of my shoulder stuff. So obviously I'm going to lean into that. But I'm, I am going to pivot to uh, really go, turning into, like, mobility rehab guy right now. Yeah. I have to. I, I mean, my, it's, my body's screaming at me that – you didn't. If you didn't learn your lesson the first two times, you better have learned it now. And so, even though I, I apologize for the audience that it probably doesn't make for the the most fun content to watch, but the truth is, I have to do this. I just have. I have to take care of my body and me. Your trying- body will talk to you, man. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Are you struggling to get a flat midsection, a flat tummy? We have a free flat tummy guide. In there, we give you strategies, techniques, exercises, nutrition tips on how to get a flat tummy. You can get it right now. It's totally free by clicking on the link in the description below. My back has been bothering me, which it never, never does, but I know why. I know why it's been bothering me. I haven't really worked my core, like really trained it uh, in a long time because I get away with not, right? It stabilizes when I do this and that, and it's totally fine. And, um, you know, just little by little, I'm like, why is my back hurt? And I'm like, yeah, I haven't done like really good. I haven't done core work mm-hmm. in a while. So I started back up today, you know, because I was like, It'll be fine. I'll rest it. Nah, still bothers me. So I got so to do the work. For yep. educational purposes, for the audience, we'll keep, we'll, I'll share this to continue the piling on how stupid I am. So <laughs> this happens to me with my so hamstring, maturation. right? I know it's just a fucking, it's so annoying. So this happens, the hamstring, of course, I'm like down, depressed. The body fat percentage comes down. I'm, I'm it piled on more. And then I'm like, self-talk like you know fucking snap out of this you can figure it out you got other things you can do go in my my gym to work out well what is like the only thing that's not hurting on me like oh i can do upper back and and shoulder stuff so i do some pull-ups and stuff like that and then i get to uh doing some shoulder stuff you know you know what i haven't done you know upright rows in a while so i go heavy Heavy, <laughs> Come on, heavy, heavy, uh, upright rows. On, hey, right? totally fine you. fucking shoulder. Oh, oh yeah oh yeah i feel great but what take a guess you're back what, what, take a guess what you think might have I, totally fine. Didn't hurt myself. There's okay. not an. This isn't an injury story. Oh, okay, okay. Take a guess at what might have happened to me after heavy ass upright rows, uh, hmm. considering my past injuries and issues that uh, I've been dealing uh, with. So the left side, where the pec injury is, where my shoulder still isn't, my scapula isn't moving optimally, uh-huh. and I'm rowing, fuck, ripping. Just my back, le- yes, my oh. back left, just fro. I'm locked. 
locked locked up. like this dude yep. i mean katrina's got the stones and working me all oh, weekend yeah your Just, body's like oh no we gotta protect you not ass. katrina was like holy shit yeah. i don't think i've ever felt knots you know what's like funny in my life you know what's funny about this is that yeah, it's uh it's crazy you because this, this is what i do if i don't feel good something kind of hurts i self-medicate with workouts yeah. i'll go work out <laughs> harder like oh it's gonna feel better <laughs> it'll just work itself some out. people do with food most people do with food most yeah. people get sad and then yeah. they'll go eat a pint yeah. of ice cream yeah. or, or eat some pizza yeah i do the same thing i'll just do another stupid workout and totally it I'm was like, so you know and, yeah. and i and i i framed it in what i can do i can <laughs> do this and, yeah it's feeling good Let's, i'm in charge here yeah 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 <laughs> 70s come on you know yeah. what i'm saying like no problem then oh yeah shoulders feel great take a picture of my big old shoulders yeah i'm all right i'm gonna be all right i'll, I'll pack on 10 pounds on them fuckers if i have to you know what i'm saying i'm gonna i'm gonna make this work you yeah. know fuck then the next day i'm like this i woke up Oh, no. <laughs> yes. can't even move my arm no. tell Katrina I'm like no, oh like man. she literally had to get into my back just so I could move my shoulder for the day and I was in pain all day long my shoulder I'm like bro if, 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 okay I'm like I listen I'm listening I'm listening you, you know what I did the other day I, I haven't done a long well I almost never do leg press I, I, I was at the gym supposed oh, to work yeah. on my legs yeah and I'm like, you know, I've never, I never do leg press. It's also one of those exercises that it's, it's so stupid when people brag. It's like relaxing. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, am I working out? Yeah, like, yeah. I, don't know. yeah just, I love it when people post fun. like how much they leg press. Like it doesn't count, right? But sure enough, I'm stacking the weights on. I'm looking around. Like, Anybody see how much I got? <laughs> on this like five inch, you know, five inches of range of motion <laughs> leg press. Yeah. I know why. I can see why people like it. Get the bros to come. Jump I can on tell top. why people like it. You need zero mobility yeah, to do it. Yeah. It's like I could jump in a leg press and don't need to warm. I mean, it'll be what I go. To, by yeah. the way when i yeah. when the hamstring heals and i'm actually yeah. feeling better say weeks three four um i will probably reintroduce a lot of machine work for a while yeah like, mm -hmm. between my mobility stuff right i'll be doing Just start that. straight bodybuilding and, and, yeah. and then i'm gonna stay high rep and superset stuff to yeah. get my just, volume just get and intensity pump. up i'll just start chasing supersets and things like that so yeah. opposite of what i would normally do to gain the most and i guess that's the <clears throat> the biggest thing for me was it was learning that is just i i can't uh to where i'm at in my life I can't take that big of a break and then come right back to that heavy intensive training. It's like, that was the real lesson to me is like, you know, I'm at a place in my life now where I have to do a lot of due diligence before I, think it's I earn a full the, before I earn the right to move weight. Exactly. Back. I was going to say, uh, you know, you, you might want to look at the, like write it out and look at it and go, okay, like that's a dramatic jump. Bro, I would never, well, I said it in the video. I would never do that to my client. If I was training, you would me, never, even if they felt good. Yes. Yeah, even my right, clients right, like, right. oh, stack. I was like, I would tell them like, bro, you were just at 135 two weeks yeah, ago. We don't yeah. need to be pulling threes. Like I would, I would You're totally, right. yeah. totally well, talk me out We sit so much in here, dude. I yeah. know that plays a fact because, yeah. you know, before that, when we were trainers, 100%. We were, we're just moving. taking weights, we're moving. I moved all day long, yeah. dude. I was just, you know, and then you could go just rip a set like super heavy and it wasn't like as damaging because yeah. you're just like constantly, you know, oiling the machine. Yeah. And so yeah. it's like, dude, th this new environment is not conducive to like high performance, high intensity training. No, no and no, this no, is no. most people's jobs are like this. I, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's no, why I didn't we, do a lot of that with my clients. What we started doing is one walk in the middle of days, what we started doing, that makes a big difference. We need to do more night, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's like a nice. <laughs> yeah, I think that's after like, what we started like doing, like band -aid, dude. Hey, well, you're like, listen, let's go for a walk, Jimmy. You, you have to. <laughs> go. You got to, because otherwise you're just sitting all day. Your yeah. body's frozen in, in position. Yeah, no doubt. Digestion no, doesn't no work. Doubt. Nothing works. No doubt. And this is most people's jobs. I know. And you're right, Justin, because for, for you know 20 years, my job involved standing and walking. Yeah. I never sat. I love it. Yeah, I don't like sitting, dude. No. It's not my thing. No, no, no. Well, I plan to, I'm going to follow Brink's protocol and, and by weeks, what is it, six or so, introduce sprinting. So I'm going to bring that back in for, for that reason, Dope. not for body composition, but literally for function for me mm, to yeah. be, have the ability to perform inside the gym is yeah. work on stuff like that. Yeah. Start Rich doing movement. some yeah hill yeah. sprints and doing some dynamic work that I just haven't addressed yeah. before I earn the right to lift really, really heavy. I can get right back into, you know, 15 reps of, you know, high rep type of supersetting and, and, and volume intensity that way. But if I want to load, and really, really yeah. push the limits. Yep. Like I'm gonna, I'm like my just, I'm gonna earn it. That's you have I'm to, yeah. Otherwise, one hundred percent, too soon, too fast. Yeah. Anyways, I gotta tell you guys over the weekend uh, what we did. It just made me laugh so hard. So uh, our church had this outdoor movie night where they had this huge projector, oh, sick, and they played Home Alone, which was you know really cool, classic uh, for kid, yeah, classic movie for kids. Although they did, they showed an edited version. 
I forgot that the original Home Alone. There's a couple there's, scenes there's in there. Some questionable uh, oh, yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah there yeah, is, bro. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple like there's where the he Playboy his... Playboy scene. Yes. Yeah, he gets the Playboy. Yes. Scene. Well, and then where the guy murders everybody, and then they. Well, I mean, that's kind of that's the... in the edited. Believe it or not, that's they kept that one in. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. It was the it was the Dirty Magazine yeah, one. Yeah, Dirty Magazine one. There's something else too that I because I remember rewatching it and Max was with me. I was like, oh, I don't remember yeah, that's not good. Yeah. But anyway, we're watching it. and It was a good time, right? We had all the kids there, and you had I had my 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 two little ones and my son. He's he just turned four, right? So he's four years old watching this and uh he was like the the, the, part, the bad guy parts or whatever the beginning of it he didn't like it dude he was scared he covered his eyes oh he's like why are they bad guys why are they gonna break into the house i don't like this Papa. i don't like this part i don't like this part <laughs> so jessica's looking at me and we're like should we take and i'm like no we can't leave now we have to let him see the funny parts so that it completes the picture right. otherwise it's just a scary he has experience to get through it yeah <laughs> he has yeah, to get yeah. through it so that we did we stuck around for That's all the good. injuries and <laughs> then we had fun the whole time. He laughed about it. So you just reminded me of Man. something about Max that uh, was la just happened last night. It was really cute. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. <coughs> so last night, Warriors are playing. Uh, you know, Max is sitting in bed next to me, and uh, I let him watch some of his his boss battles, right? Now, boss battles are on YouTube. We're very strict about YouTube stuff with him, right? Like, we don't let him sit on there by himself or whatever like that. No, because they'll just recommend all kinds of that, stuff. That, that's right, right. So we So it's very highly regulated by us. If there is something that we want him to see that's on YouTube, it's like you're monitoring well you know truth be told dad's watching the basketball game so, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so he's, he's like he's in my arm he's next to me he's watching his boss battles and i'm like the game is like cuts to like a commercial like that and i look over at him and uh he's got he's got the phone in his lap like this and he's doing this oh and he's and he's going like this he's not looking at himself he's not, he's not looking at the, at the phone and i'm like what are you doing he goes uh commercial and i'm like huh I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, mom, mommy says I can't watch the commercials on YouTube. And I'm like, oh my God, so great. It was so, so cute. Great. It was so cute that he He's had self Yeah, he was self-monitoring himself. I thought that was so cute. And I was, I mean, he totally could have gone away. Dad wouldn't have said shit. I didn't yeah. know anything was going on. Like I wasn't paying attention to what he was doing really. Yeah, that's so and I only caught him doing that because he was like looking away and covering the screen. And he would like it. check to see if it was back. And I'm like, what are you doing? And yeah. it's like, yeah, a commercial. Mommy said I can't watch the commercials on YouTube. And I'm like, oh, good boy. All right, that's Kids awesome. Kids are great. Dude, dude. that's yeah. just, like Everett was the same. He'll, uh, I caught him one time muting uh, when there's bad words, like when he was watching on TV. He was just muting. himself. He's just sitting there by himself. Too. And I was like, wow. He's, he's always kind of been like that, though. Like with, even with Courtney and I, if we're like, you know, just in the car or doing something and like a word comes out and he's just like, dad it's a bad word <laughs> yeah like, yeah it is a bad I, word. when they Sorry. i think it's one of it's one of my favorite things of fatherhood i think is actually seeing uh like the training of something like that come out so well where they're like where he'll do things like that like i mean it was it was real quick too katrina had trained him about when he gets you know, before bath time he takes off his clothes you know and he got to an age where it's like hey you could put your stuff in the dirty clothes so it's just like when you take off your clothes you don't just throw them on the floor you walk them over to there and if and when we first were tr training him that it was like we use things like hey if you want three books tonight don't forget to do these things and all it took was like one time of like yeah hey, you forgot to put your clothes in there and i was like oh so like he then right away is always like as soon as he takes his clothes off goes and then he lets you know like mommy i put it in the in yeah. the laundry room good job good job and it's like now a trained behavior like i love seeing those things like manifest well, after we, yeah after he's trying you teach him something and then he's picked it up enough that he remembers better than you do they do that with cool. everything like yeah. we we my you know we we make jokes around the house with little kids i'll make jokes uh, butts and farts is like the funny joke right everything yeah. butts and farts right well he kept making that butt never jokes ends, by the way. and his mom made a comment to him like oh stop you're obsessed with butts wrong thing to say now he tells people he's obsessed with butts oh god yeah now he, now he's talking to me like, i'm obsessed with butts oh, like, my oh god <laughs> you hear a four-year-old say that you're like what are you talking about bro? i'm obsessed with butts <laughs> it's just gonna increase just buddy. Like, yeah. i'm like you think you're obsessed with butts now yeah, just dude. wait just wow. wait till you get older bro <laughs> until you go through puberty yeah instead uh, of, then you really get obsessed oh dude, dude i got actually got challenged uh, my friend came over with his two boys they're great kids uh i'm gonna put that out there first First, um, definitely more free range, let's say. Yeah. Uh, and so he, he, they like actually gave me a run for my money in terms of comfort. You know, like I like I told you guys before, like they can climb trees, and we've gone, you know, to like dog parks, and then like all of a sudden you'll see like Everett way up in the tree, and people freak out. Well, uh, so they Everett just takes them out to the forest, and I'm like, whatever. Like me and him, like he's he's the drummer I used to play with, you know, in college, and so we're just like, you know, having a great time. Like actually, I bought a um, a drum set 
over the weekend. You just Because, yeah, I was like, do you, you play drums? I, I want to learn. It was a cheap set. What's that? Do you play the drums? No, never played. Because I, I didn't know you played the piano until that one time we were at that place and you just started playing piano. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can play piano and guitar Super and bass, hot. but, like, <laughs> I've never learned uh, um, drums yet. And my friend was just like, I was going to just rent a drum set because I was like, dude, I just really, while you're here, I want to jam. And he's like, yes, me too. And we were just like itching for it. And so I like I bought the set because it was like the same price as like renting it. I'm like, stupid. So I just, I brought it in uh, and, and we were playing the whole time and like having a great time. But then I'm like, I wonder what the kids are up to, you know? Like, and so I go back and they had taken like one of my old rickety ladders that was like up on this like windmill and taking that out to the water tower, which is like two stories high. And it only went up like maybe a quarter of the way. And they thought in their brain they could grab like these sticks that were like from a redwood tree, like had fallen. It had these like branches and they thought that they could like put those as the addition to the uh, <laughs> ladder, tie them together with a rope they found. Like they went through all of my tools and things in my garage <laughs> and were trying to like, you know, rig together some oh contraption to climb all the way to the top because they thought that would be fun. Did you stop them? Yeah, okay, okay. just barely. Yeah, it, it, so my compromise was like, uh, okay, maybe you guys can go make a boat, you know, with this and go in the uh, creek, yeah. you know. And I'm like, it's a little less risk with yeah. that, you yeah. know. But uh, and then later on, like they heard a coyote, and so they were like chasing a coyote. I'm like, this is a wild animal, dude. <laughs> hey, hold on, didn't you say you sent a video the other day of a of a that was me. Oh, was that you? Oh, no, it was Justin. Oh, yeah. uh, Justin sent it to me, and then I yeah, said, yeah the mountain lion. Mountain so lion. Courtney was freaking out because yeah, there's been that's a big sucker. sightings of a mountain lion uh, through the neighborhood. You know, the previous days. Uh, we don't know if it's still in the area or not, but it was big. Have you been watching the news? It's like a whole family. They've made it all the way to Pleasanton and to uh, where else? I've seen Arnold, Arnold Pleasanton. Right? Yeah. yeah, they've been they've been cruising around. There's like a whole family of them. Isn't that I weird wonder. that we live like around like you forget lions. about that? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and they're they're vicious. Like so, even way back in the day, the story. I don't know if you guys remember like Quicksilver, like the uh, trail. Yeah, here and like some kid like got snatched by a, a mountain lion, oh, and they had to like pry him loose. That was Courtney's coworker's like son. Oh, wow. Did it, the kid be, was he okay? He was okay. He oh, got, okay. yeah, I mean, he, you know, mauled up a little bit, but yeah, he was okay. Oh, man. Dude. Yeah, so the, it's like, you know, it, you don't mess around with with. They don't They don't bother people typically, but they'll eat your pets. Oh, eat your that's, pets. that's what'll happen, yeah. He had a huge eat your um, dog like a raccoon snack. in its mouth. Yeah. Uh, we, we saw all our neighbors had kind of sightings on their cameras, and we were kind of sharing them. You don't realize how big they are until you see them like next to a dog or like another like animal that's like yeah, similar. They'll, they'll kill your dog easy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, they're, they're crazy. Your dog ain't doing nothing. No, that. especially my wiener dog. It's, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's just, a snack. It's a literal hot yeah. dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, like, that's like hey, one bite. Hey, I'm worried speaking, about like hawks. Spe them. Speaking of snacks and stuff, uh, did you have you guys did you guys try the hot cocoa hack that we heard from the I think oh, from Element? I haven't tried it yet. That sounds delicious. So you I get, will though. You get, you can get sugar free hot cocoa. Okay, so it's already low calorie. Add a half of a of a tube of the Element. So it's got the sodium in there. Yeah, the, it's. Amazing. I'm going to try it. Um, when that, you you have to use the right one, though, the chocolate element. Chocolate, sorry. Yeah, you yeah, just don't use put the like chocolate the, element. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Slime or something. You don't want like watermelon. Gross. Gross. <laughs> no, no, no. Use the so chocolate. do that. So oh. Element has a chocolate one. So it's their- They have chocolate. They have mint, too, chocolate, don't they? They have a couple like on that line. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So if you use the, the, the Element that's chocolate, do it with hot cocoa. You can do it with the sugar-free hot cocoa. You will have a low calorie, amazing. Hot so cocoa. I have to be honest. Yeah, when that first good. that that line first came out, I was not a fan of it because I was just mixing it with water. And yeah, no, just, same here. I was like, man, this is no, but hot with hot cocoa, amazing. Sounds amazing. So amazing. I'm after that caller called in and said that I'm like, I'm gonna definitely try that. Have you seen the trend that uh, Dylan and I started from the YouTube channel? No, what? Yeah, that I got everybody. I get tagged all the time now of people taking the grapefruit warm oh yeah yeah and pouring it over ice yeah. it's like huh, if you guys haven't good. done that it's yet super good it is so good because okay. it melts the ice a little bit and and it just waters it down a it tiny gives bit it enough coldness mm -hmm. to yeah and then it makes it like instantly fresh and cold like it is it's the it's the move oh okay. so you know why they made it with chocolate this makes perfect sense winter activities so if you're a skier snowboarder you're yeah. outside you're sweat you're out there you need electrolytes mix uh, it with your Hot cocoa drink or yeah, something. The then, intention was to do it with hot. Yes, dude. Right Actually, I bet you if you took, I haven't tried this yet, but you take the, the Element chocolate medley 
and do it with just milk or macadamia nut milk or almond milk. Just that alone, warm, probably good. I don't mm-hmm. know. I, we ha- we'll delicious. have to play around with it probably. and try it, though, because I definitely didn't do it right, the original. No, you do a cold water gross. The original one, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. if you go to their website, they have recipes. Oh, they do? Yeah. What? So you, can, you can check it out. Oh, that, one, that. that one looks yeah, all good. gourmet. Look over at the peppermint one. mocha one? Yeah. Okay. Justin, do you, you're you yeah. the drink mix guy. Do yeah. you make a good like Christmas drink? Um. Yeah, I do hot toddies. and. Oh, um, you made me one once. That mm-hmm. was good. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm... I don't get too extravagant, but I've I've been thinking about that though. I might try and, and do a staple one this year and like mix around. Like I'm gonna have to, and and you know, unfortunately, this is a fitness podcast, but uh, <laughs> like Moore's eggnog, like is so delicious. So is I'm gonna have to do some kind of cocktail with that. What's Moore's? It's just, and I'm again, I'm I just added five to ten pounds to everybody listening. <laughs> um, but it's like it's just the smoothest. It's not too sweet. It, you know how a lot of egg. Eggnog's like really like yolk heavy and yeah. it's like thick. I actually like the 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 lower fat one because sometimes the the other ones are too rich. So this is like that kind of smoothness, but it's still got high calorie. Oh, okay, and it's super tasty. Yeah, the Moors. It's I'd it's have amazing. to do a dairy free eggnog. So I, I do. Know, a, so yeah, it wouldn't be any good for you. I do like a uh, like a peppermint candy cane type of uh, um, white Russian. So it's like a twist on a white Russian. But oh, I, yeah. I like uh, peppermint candy cane, peppermint snops, and some other stuff that makes it pretty good. Mm. That sounds so, good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all Good stuff you can't. Uh, all stuff you can't have. Yeah, I do have a shout out uh, today. So, which is really cool because we're doing this promotion uh, for people to be able to win entries for our place at Park City. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this guy reaches out to me. Uh, I believe his name is Mason, um, and he owns a cafe there. It's called Jade's Cafe. And, oh, oh, by the house. By the house Incredible. in Hebrew City, and so he's just like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do you guys a saw in. in Spiff you some, um, you know, gift cards so you can give them to the winners. So oh, that way they oh, come yeah. visit and go to the the cafe. So here's how like, it is. That's, that's so it's awesome. a, it's black. It's an early. It's early Black Friday for us. So you could get any program, any bundle, sixty percent off. So any maps, anything, sixty percent off. If you get a bundle, you get ten entries. If you get an individual program, you get five entries. And that's to win uh, a, a vacation at yeah, the park. Any, any, any mods, any guides, or one entry. Right, and that's yeah. to win access to, or you get, a, you can win a free vacation. Five so day, bonus. five night stay at the park city plus a thousand dollar voucher for your travel for flight and stuff. And now you're Ooh. getting gift. And they're going to be the, two winners. Two yes. So there's going to be two different two opportunities. Winners. Yeah, let's yeah. go. go. Check it out. I'm yeah, excited. Awesome. I'm excited. Look, you're not what you eat, you're what you digest. Check it out. If you had a high-protein diet, you want that protein to go to your muscles, you need digestive enzymes to break those proteins down into amino acids. What about carbohydrates? You also need digestive enzymes. Same thing with fats. Look, there's a company called Bioptimizers that makes digestive enzymes for fitness fanatics. It's called Masszymes. Take this with your meals. Your food will start working better for you. It also helps with digestive issues. And if you go to them right now and use our discount code, Go to buyoptimizers.com. That's B I optimizers.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10. You'll get 25% off. That's because of the Black Friday blowout sale. Again, buyoptimizers.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10 right now. 25% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Phil from Massachusetts. Hey, Phil. How's it going? What's happening? Good. How are you doing today? Good. How can we help you? Uh, well, I sent an email in and they, they said I could ask the question on air. So that's great. Um, I'm 56 years old and it seems my uh, emotions have gone haywire. And I believe there might be something going on with hormone levels. And I'm having them checked. I'm using two different companies because I'm still a little skeptical on the whole uh, process. So I'm going to do one online test kit and another in person at a brick and mortar location. And my question is not looking for medical advice. My question would be, uh, what's your experience with the with the TRT, and are there any good alternatives to TRT that might have uh, less side effects? Well, if okay, so a <clears throat> couple things. Um, there could be a lot of reasons why um, you're feeling strong emotions or changes in how you feel. One of them can be hormones, and that's actually one of the easier ones to fix. So if they do see that you are in the low range of, let's say, testosterone, or there seems to be some strange imbalance, typically it's it's pretty easily corrected. Testosterone is a pretty easy hormone uh, to correct uh, uh, in most cases. So if you do have low testosterone and then you start using testosterone within 
a few weeks, you'll notice a substantial change uh, in how you feel. Now, if it's not hormones, then things get a little bit more complicated. Uh, there could be lots of different reasons. Uh, but you'd have to look a little deeper. But as far as replacement therapy is concerned, especially when it comes to the hormone of testosterone, another one that's easy is thyroid, for example, uh, although that one sometimes takes longer to adjust. If it is the case that your testosterone's in the low range and you are exhibiting symptoms of low testosterone, uh, not <clears throat> not that not that hard to fix. Uh, supplemental testosterone, boom, typically uh, takes care of everything. As far as side effects are concerned, if the supplemental testosterone is a little too high, you may notice things like water retention, uh, conversion to estrogen. Uh, again, that can be regulated uh, through your dosing. Um, but you know, otherwise it's not that big, really it's, it's not that hard of a, of a problem to solve, uh, from that standpoint, if and, that and, is indeed the issue and extremely safe. Uh, you, and obviously you're doing it the right way. You're going through a clinic. So what they're going to do is they're going to want to see your, your blood work every three months or so. And they'll be checking all these levels to make sure that, oh, if it is too much that we balance out the estrogen or we bring the dose down. Typically, they start you really low. Typically, they'll start you really, really low. And more often than not, we'll have to slowly add uh, more often than they will have to take away. They, they rarely, I've, at least in all the cases I've been around, I've never seen a doctor prescribe too much testosterone and then have to scale back. They typically start at a low dose. There is also, Philip, alternatives to... Uh, trying to jumpstart your t natural testosterone without getting on replacement therapy like uh, HCG is <clears throat> an option where you'll take HCG uh, injections. Although at your age, they probably would skip that. <clears throat> at your age, they'll go straight to they'll, they'll probably go straight to testosterone because um, jumpstarting it if it were low. Once you go off the HCG, you'll probably go back to where it was before. Was this a sudden change? Uh, did you, were you just like, everything was fine and then suddenly, yeah. or was it more of a gradual like over a Michelin time? commercial or something? Well, it's funny. Um, when I look at like the questionnaires online of low T, um, I don't have a ton of the, uh, the markers that they're looking for. I'm not exhausted. I'm not, uh, you know, I've got plenty of motivation to do whatever I need during the day. Uh, I don't have a, a very low libido. I mean, things did change probably around 45, 50 years old. Uh, but this one now at 56 was a like a seemed like a switch just turned on. It was a, mm. a sudden change, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, someone I didn't even know had passed away, and I'm just in tears over that fact, which oh. I don't even know the person. Okay. Mm. So it's a sudden, sudden type of thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. It, it, like I said, to to see if it is a hormonal issue is is going to be relatively easy, um, and pretty straightforward. If it's not that, um, then oftentimes it has to do with unresolved trauma that can sometimes surface later on in life uh, or an event in life can can bring things up that you might not have been aware of. Far more complicated uh, of, a, of an issue to look at and work through. But as far as the hormones are concerned, it's very straightforward. I mean, you're going to get your mm -hmm. blood work back. You're going to see total testosterone. You're going to see free testosterone. You're going to see estrogen. Um, you're going to see thyroid. Um, and they'll look at your nutrients probably as well. And it, you'll know pretty pretty, pretty easily if it's off or not. And with testosterone, if it's in the low range, um, then they probably will recommend that you try supplementing to see if it, if it changes anything. But if it's within the middle, you know, um, then it's probably not the issue. It, it can be absolutely life-changing, though, the positive effects of if you are low and then you t start on a replacement therapy dose, it, it is absolutely life-changing for most most all clients I've ever uh, yeah. sent that way. I do want to talk a little bit, though, about what your – I see I'm, I'm reading uh, – kind of the breakdown of what you got going on. You seem to be very active. You seem you do a lot of a lot of workouts, uh road bike, stationary bike, rowing machine, inclined treadmill. Looks like you're doing a lot of steps. You also got high volume of workouts. Tell me a little bit about uh your training regimen. How long have you been training this way for and do you do all that every week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started this about uh 6 months ago. At the time I um picked up uh, Invisalign uh, teeth straighteners and they recommended you wear them 22 hours a day. And they call that the Invisalign diet, right? There's no snacking during the day. <laughs> You've got to really think out your food. Uh, so, you know, I, when I was doing that, I said, well, it might be a nice time to get healthy. And then I said, it might be a nice time to work out. 
So it didn't all happen all at once, but I've come together now and lost 20, 25, almost 30 pounds. Um, I'm probably running around a mid teens, 15%, maybe on body fat and uh, everything fits better. And yeah, I've just been working out hard for, uh, for six months now. Okay. Hey, because of the way you're feeling right now, I would definitely scale back on the volume of training. So uh, it might have been appropriate at one point, but when you start to feel this way, your body's under a lot of stress, you do need to reduce uh, the, the stress that you can easily reduce, which is just the, your, the, the workouts. So what I would do is I would cut back on the volume of everything. I would do less cardio and less strength training and a lower intensity. <clears throat> now, that doesn't mean you can't be active. Um, you know, you could, you could continue to, to, to walk and stuff like that, but you got to be a little bit more gentle with the stress that you're applying right now because it seems like you're already overwhelmed with some other kind of stress, and it's just going to compile. It's just going to make things worse. Yeah, in, endurance training combined with a, a lot of sets and combined with low calorie could absolutely suppress mm -hmm. testosterone too, just so you know. So, I mean, you could you could potentially be feeling some of this uh, mm -hmm. and, and because of how much uh, overall stress that the body's taking. And even though you might feel good while you're doing it, uh, tr training, even though it's good for us, state. it's still a stress. And doing that in the context of, of low calorie uh, could absolutely. And suppress. this, you said this has been what you've been doing for six months. Yeah, yeah, six seven now actually. Yeah. Before that, what were you doing? Well, before that, I was, uh, you know, I, I was I rode all all summer on the bike, um, not not weightlifting, but I was very, uh, uh, you know, kept moving. You see, my body was out of shape, but I could ride 50, 60 miles on the bicycle on the road. So it wasn't like I was totally out of shape, but my muscles were not defined and I was carrying a lot of extra, extra fat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you really ramped it up though over the last six months. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I've been, you know, trying to eat a lot, keep my metabolism up. I'll have a couple breakfasts a day. Uh, and then, you know, I'll do three, sometimes 4,000 calories food, but oh, okay. I'm, you know, I'm, hmm. I'm beating that down with the, with the cardio, with the bike, with the rowing, uh, and the weightlifting is just to get the muscle, you know, to build the muscle. In the meantime, uh, while you're trying to figure things out, I would definitely reduce everything though. It's a, that's a lot, especially considering how you're feeling. Um, and Adam's right. Uh, that could also cause depressions and testosterone. I mean, the cumulative volume over time, uh, you know, it could start to become overwhelming on the body. But nonetheless, even if it wasn't, the fact that you're feeling the way you are, uh, it, it's a, that's a lot on top of all of that. So I would definitely reduce it because it's not helping you. And considering that you are at a good, healthy place, body fat percentage wise, sounds like you did a really good job. You've reduced some uh, a, a substantial amount of body fat, and you're in a good, healthy place percentage wise. Now this would be a great time to really scale back on all the cardio endurance type training and just focus on strength training. And that would look like for me with you either three days a week, full body, like a MAPS anabolic program, or even a MAPS 15. So if you like to do something every day, six days a week, I could have you do two exercises and it might seem like it's way less, but your body will respond and you will build some muscle, especially if you're eating a good amount of calories, like you're saying, and you prioritize strength training over a lot of the endurance training you should see a nice bump uh, from that alone. Do you have it, either one of those programs, Phil? Can we send one of those to you? Oh, sure. You sure could. I don't have any. No, sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Let's send... Um, <clears throat> I like Mass 15. Yeah, let yeah. me send you Mass 15. Do the barbell, the free weight version of it. Um, and in the meantime, let's really reduce... Okay, that's good because that's basically all I have right now are uh, dumbbells. I don't go to the gym. I just have the, dumb the dumbbells at, the, at home. Okay. I don't know if that was what you meant. Yeah, I believe there's barbell uh, in there. Uh, you know, Maps Anabolic has a dumbbell only version. Mm -hmm. Maybe that might be more appropriate. Let me yeah, send you. Version. Yeah, let me send you Maps Anabolic. Do the at home version, and then uh, it, let's reduce the cardio for now. Uh, walking is fine, but all the other intense cardio, let's cut that down for now because it's not doing you any favors uh, in in the meantime until we get your hormone uh, test back and see where you're at. I honestly think that you within two weeks, Philip, you should feel, if we're on point with our recommendation, you should feel a pretty nice difference just in two weeks' time of reducing all the endurance type training. Walking is totally fine, but any of the more intensive cardio, like rowing, like cycling, like scaling that all back, just lifting three three times a week, full body with your dumbbell routine at home, you should see a nice positive change uh, just from that right away. So, uh, and, and then I would love to hear back from you when you go get your 
blood work done. That'll actually give us more insight on on what's going mm-hmm. on too. Yeah, awesome. Sounds sounds like a great plan. Appreciate it. Right Thanks, on. Phil. All right, Phil, we're gonna send that over to you. All right, keep up the good work, guys. You got it. Take it easy. Yeah, you know that's, um, a, that's a lot, bro. Yeah, he's doing a lot. Yeah, you know he was so in his in his emails for just for context for people. um, You know he lists his his symptoms as feeling a lot of feelings, Mm. um, uh, and a lot of emotions. So that doesn't necessarily mean uh, low testosterone, low libido, low drive. um, You know, low motivation. Mm. That's usually now it could be it could be low testosterone, high estrogen. That can cause some of that, uh, but he did say someone died, not super close to him. Mm-hmm. It could also be some un, something that's popping up, and, and you know that he might have been. It suppressing, is, but, but I'm I'm willing to bet at his age, the amount of endurance training he's doing, he's gonna not come helping. Back, him, he's going to yeah. come back with low testosterone. I I bet you money. Could I bet yeah, you he money could. he will come back with low testosterone with that amount of endurance training like that at that at that age all the things that he's doing just now adjusting that, that will help his mood I, overall mood and energy I regardless think, yeah. I, I, regardless one yeah. i 100 percent think so and i and i hope that um you know it's interesting it's so funny like because when it comes to like thyroid birth control nobody hesitates to take that hormone like it's like yeah. it's mm-hmm. not it's like it's I know. everybody assumes it's so healthy and safe and it's like you can make the case that testosterone is as safe or safer safer, mm-hmm. safer than those you take a bottle of thyroid to cure yourself yeah, you, it, you can take your whole bottle of testosterone at once and you won't die <laughs> you'd be totally and, fine and so it's just interesting the the perception around uh testosterone has just got a bad rap it's tied to you know insane looking bodybuilders who yeah. take you know super physiological doses that's one of the safer hormones to yeah. replace yeah and can be life changing almost every client like and this was didn't happen till later later part of my career did i start to really piece this together but if i had a client uh, above 45 i mean one of the first things i didn't care if how they told me they fall i would tell them go get your blood work done let's just see what we got because here's another thing a lot of times people don't know that they don't feel great they because they've adapted and they've done such right. a good job. They don't know until the the, the yes, veil has been lifted because they don't know what amazing yeah. feels like yet. Now in their head, they're like, "No, I feel good. If I find yeah. I do all this rowing, yeah. I do all this biking, I'm, I'm motivated. Hmm. I work. Yeah. I'm smart. then you then you lift the curtain. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, and then you actually yeah. do it, and you're like, "Holy yep. shit! There's a whole nother level to totally. me that I didn't even know existed." Totally. So even that can be a little hard for people to gauge because your body is resilient; it does adapt. And, but you just don't know what amazing feels like and you've been getting by. And so I hope if he is low, I hope he does take the plunge and, and utilize that because it can be absolutely life-changing for someone. Our next caller is Alyssa from Illinois. Hi, Alyssa. How you doing? Hey, guys. Hello. What's up? What's up? Hello. How can we help you? Hey, so um, I appreciate you guys having me on. Um, I was on about a year ago. And you guys helped me a lot. So I appreciate you having me back on. Awesome. Welcome back. Um. Thank you. So this is a really sensitive subject for me. So bear with me and go easy on me. Um, I'm going to just read straight from my email so I don't lose track. Is that all right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So I'm 32 years old and five foot seven. Fitness has been a part of my life for over 15 years, but from the ages of 17 to 21, I lost hundred pounds at my lowest body weight though. Um, I was doing like hit cardio boot camp, stuff like that, but I was 160 pounds and really unhealthy because I lost my period for two years. My hair was falling out, super damaged. I was sore all the time, um, all the bad stuff you guys always talk about. But after a few years of switching all that out, I started strength training, um, like strictly tracking macros, being active with walks and biking, like low intensity stuff a few days a week. My weight actually got up to about 180, 190, um, but I felt really fit and I knew my body composition had changed a lot. Um, I hear you guys tell people all the time to throw away the scale, but every time I do that um, and I check on it every couple months, I see a number that just seems way too high um, for a young female. So lately my weight has been over 200 pounds on the scale and it currently fluctuates between like 210 and 215. Um, So I'm wondering if that's something I need to be concerned about if my body composition is healthy and I have no negative side effects. Um, so some background information, I've been following maps programs for over three years before I found mind pump though, I was extremely familiar with lifting weights because I had, I got my bachelor's in exercise science and then I joined the military. So being in the army, um, and just having that background, being active and fit, huge part of my life. 
Um, I track macros. I hit between 170 and 180 grams of protein daily. It's not hard for me to hit protein. Um, I'm eating between 2,200 and 2,400 calories, but still actually trying to figure out my maintenance after all these years because I've just been all over the place. So seeing my weight on the scale is super discouraging and it's making me nervous to keep reversing and adding calories since I'm convinced my weight shouldn't be that high as a woman. Um, I lift three days a week. I'm following Max Anabolic for the second time. I just finished performance. Um, I walk for cardio. I'm sleeping great. I cut caffeine. I have great energy. My period's regular. I had labs done through Transcend. I've had labs done through the VA. Nothing's out of the ordinary. Um, I see muscle definition. My libido's high. My clothes fit great. My strength has gone up. I do red light therapy. My hair is healthy. I do all the things that you guys always talk about um, for the last few years. So if I see all these positive things happening, do I need to be concerned that I weigh as much as a grown man? Um, I weigh even more than some men. Um, so um, I don't know my body fat, but I did just find a clinic that does DEXA scans. So I'm going to make an appointment. Um, if I had to guess, I would say low to mid 20s just because of the muscle definition I can see. And the fact that all the all my clothes still fit great over the last few years, even though my weight has gone up significantly, um, my clothes fit even better just because I'm more built, like my legs and my glutes are a lot more built. So I'm actually happy with how they fit. So I want to continue to reverse to reverse diet, but I'm terrified that the number on the scale is just going to keep going up and dictate my mood and my progress. And I'm smart enough to know better, but I feel like as a young woman, should I be concerned with the number? Like, do I continue on this path of reverse dieting with the possibility that I'm in the 200s with my body weight and that weight, that number can still go up? And like, I don't even know what the normal fluctuation is when I'm monitoring body weight during a reverse diet. So I just feel like I'm all over the place. And this is a really difficult topic for me um, because I, I keep equating my body weight with like, oh, a woman shouldn't weigh that much. But I have all these positive things. So I just really need you guys to kind of walk me through this and maybe like <laughs> yeah. give me some tips. I got you. <laughs> Alyssa, do you, do you walk around with your, your with your with a sign with your body weight on it? <laughs> no, I don't talk about my Who body cares? weight ever. <laughs> nobody cares. You, I tell you something. No, nobody yeah. cares. Yeah, they really you, don't. Like, yeah, absolutely I, not. I, yeah, I, you have a ton of muscle, and I know you do because yeah. you don't look your like. I guarantee nobody would guess your weight. No, because you. I nobody, yeah. and I sent some pictures. I don't know if you guys saw in the email. I I don't have social media, so I attached a couple selfies to some of the the email I first sent out to Doug, or the second I sent two emails because I forgot to attach the pictures. So you can see, hopefully, I don't know if you guys got them. But, he's going to find them. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have Doug pull. Okay. But I can tell just by looking at you in this camera right now, and I know what the average person who walks around over 200 pounds looks like, especially a female, and you don't look mm -hmm. that, which yeah. tells me right away you've probably got some seriously muscular legs on you and you've built some great muscle and everything you're telling us. Right. I mean, uh, 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 yeah. all, all signs, positive things. Yeah, all signs are uh, everything's going really well for you other than yeah. this right. arbitrary you, number. Would you trade your health for a better number on the scale? <laughs> your energy, your libido, I, your... Yeah, no. No. Yeah, it's... it's but really, here's the thing. Yeah. So I literally, like, I'm at the point where, like, my body dysmorphia is so bad and my anxiety is so high that, like, I won't go to the doctor and I tell them not to weigh me. Um, they last time I was weighed, they gave me a, you know, the BMI is bullshit. So like they gave me after my appointment, they gave me a pamphlet that said yeah. how to monitor your nutrition because I came up obese on the BMI yeah, scale. So do we. But looking yeah. at I me, mean, I'm clearly not yeah. obese. We, we, <laughs> we all we all come up obese also. Yeah. So yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Okay, listen, but, don't listen. Yeah. Clinics were after me. I, yeah. th this is not an issue with your workout. It's not an issue with your diet. This is an issue with um, your relationship with the scale. And so that's where you got to place your focus. This is what you need to work on. It's not your workout and everything. Else. You've got everything else yeah. doing great. You're doing so, great so with everything. You're dialed in. And you feel great. And you know it. You know, it's because we're having this conversation and we're having this, you know, you're obviously very logical. You're breaking it down. But it's like, I can't get through this feeling that I have. Well, that's that's the thing you should work on. And, and there's a few things you could do with that. One is never weigh yourself again when you go to the doctor. You mm -hmm. deal with it or whatever and focus on the positive stuff because that'll help because where you place your focus is is where you're going to be focused. And the second, you know, you, you could always work with therapists and coaches through this process. Body dysmorphia is a tough thing to deal with, mm -hmm. uh, especially when there's a should. I should be this. I should do that. I should whatever. Um, but that's the that's the issue. The issue is the dysmorphia. The issue is not the weight on the scale. If your health is good, your energy is good. 
you, you're, you're working out good. You said your clothes fit good. Like, it, yeah, that's the, the problem isn't the weight. The problem really isn't the weight. It's your perception of the weight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, especially if you if you go get this DEXA scan and it comes back in the low 20s. Uh, Even if it comes back in the mid 20s or right, high 20s. Like yeah. body fat, once you get to 30%, you start to see some health detriments. But by itself, even then, it's okay. Uh, it's usually in combination with other metrics like inactivity or you know hormone issues and stuff like that. But I mean, you're based off what you're saying. You're you're doing fine. It's just literally, it's the it's the it's the relationship with a number, and it's mm -hmm. a number. Talk yeah. talk to me a little bit about the the reverse diet. And so I, I'm I'm guessing since the last time we spoke to you, almost a year ago or whatever, you've been on this kind of reverse diet kick. And where were you calorie wise back then? And where are you currently now? And have you done any interruptions with little cuts, or have you been on the reverse diet the entire time? So. I, I want to say about a year ago, again, I'm still working through a lot of anxiety. So I was probably a year ago at like 2000 calories for like nine months and I wouldn't budge. So I just increased them to like 2200 to 2400. And I saw in three weeks, my weight on the scale went up eight pounds. So I was like, there's no fucking way. Sorry, excuse my language. But I was like, there's no way. There's no way this could have like... I, and then I drop them back down to like 1800 just to see if like it's water, carbs, something, right? And I lost four pounds in a week. So I was like, why is it that my weight is so sensitive? And it's like, it fluctuates so much that I don't know if it's water, if it's glycogen, if it's like activity, if, bad sleep. Like I don't Alyssa, know what's going on. If it, so, if, it, if it reacts that quickly over a week, it's not body fat. Yeah, it's water. Yeah, it's then it's water and glycogen and, mm -hmm. and, and you know inflammation. Mm -hmm. It's not fat. Right. If it happens in a week, it ain't body fat. You ain't gonna burn. Right, you ain't gonna right. Burn, and you I know that you guys, I, I'm smarter than that. I yeah. know, I know. <laughs> Listen, but this, so here's what I got to tell you though, Alyssa. It's <laughs> not about being smart, and it's not about having uh, the right information. You've got all mm -hmm. that. It's this relationship that you have with the scale that is playing in the background. And it takes over. Mm -hmm. It takes over your feelings. So logically, you're like, I shouldn't be feeling this way. But you are. So that's the thing you need to focus on and work on. And if you don't mm -hmm. work on that relationship, you're not going to, in other words, you're not going to logic yourself out of this. Logic will not work. I promise you. It's just going to, you're going to well, be worried about Adam. Here. Tell Adam to stop talking about his weight because he's six foot four, like 199 <laughs> listen, pounds. And I'm like, I'm five foot seven and I weigh, and I'm a girl listen, and I weigh more than Adam. <laughs> listen, Adam is, a, Adam is an ectomorph. Adam's got a, his, his frame is, yeah. a, he's got, his bones aren't heavy. You know, I'm kind of like that as well. Justin's right, on the other right. end. Yeah. So I know we, females hold fat differently. I know we store body fat differently than men. I get that. Yeah, yeah. But again, it, that's part of the mind games I, that I, I play with myself I, I yeah. do i do think your body is telling you though that it wants more calories for the amount of muscle mass that you have uh and i'm, I'm assuming you're probably pretty strong too mm -hmm. your 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 body wants more calories and it, and it needs to get there so i you you just need to trust the process and keep reverse dieting yeah. because you easily uh based off of where you're at you could easily get up to 3,000 calories I've, a day that sounds crazy and i wouldn't jump you there right away but that's a good mm -hmm. goal is to get up to a number like that. And then we can play with, okay, you're at 3,000. Now let's drop down to 2,500 for a couple of weeks yeah. and see what your body does. But I think mm -hmm. metabolically uh, is what's what's happening is you need to feed the body what it, what, what it wants. Oh, look, I've not. had a few, I've had quite a few female trainers work for me who were built. I mean, they were built and all of them were 30, 40 pounds heavier than you would guess. Every single one of them. And, and some of them struggled with this as well. And they didn't like their body weight. Some of them embraced it. And they're like, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. strong, I'm built, or whatever. And, and when I say built, I mean, you know, men notice, like, wow, she is, yeah. like, really fit. She looks incredible, or whatever. Right. Because they're not asking them about their weight. Yeah, no, either. they're not yeah. going By the way, They just see that you're right. built. You know? you I get great. asked how much... I get asked how my bench and squat all the time, which is pretty, I'm proud. <laughs> yeah, and cool. like, I would say like, people tell me if my friends could describe me, they always say like, I'm solid and dense. When they yeah. hug me, they're like, you don't jiggle, like nothing yeah. on you moves. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, I mean, you know, maybe the good parts do, but like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like when, <laughs> when they, when they hug me though, they're like, damn, like your back is like lean. Like what the hell? So like, yeah. I know that my body composition yeah. is healthy, 
But yeah. as a woman, it's just, I can't wrap my brain around the fact yeah. that yeah. I'm healthy and all these things. So I know I have to work through that. But back to you, Adam, with the reverse diet. Yeah. What I normally have done is like every few weeks, I'll add a couple hundred calories for a few weeks and see what my weight's doing in like three to four weeks time. Is yeah. that ideal? Yeah, or- except for I would actually tell, tell you to stop doing the weighing. And, and don't, use, don't, use, use body fat I, percentage test. Here's the deal: if I if I bump you a couple hundred calories uh, and your scale goes mm-hmm. up five to eight pounds, I don't. I still don't care as your trainer. I don't care. It's, you know, it's, still by the going, way, I still I'm I'm still going to yeah. stay the course where I if that's mentally fucking you and you go back every time, yes. you're not you're not doing. We're not rebuilding the metabolism. You're giving it. You're feeding it for a little while, but then as soon as you see that scale weight go up and you come back the other direction we're right back to square one again. Like you just need to stay the course for a while and trust the process. Mm -hmm. And if getting on the scale and seeing the scale go up during that time is going to fuck with you, I would just tell you, you need to get rid of that. We got to stop doing that. By the way, Alyssa, um, the more muscle you have, the more you're going to fluctuate with water and glycogen. That's right. So if you have, and and, you know, hormones play a role too. Women typically will fluctuate more than, uh, than men will. But if you have a lot of muscle, like I could, okay, I could easily, okay, no joke, I could easily gain or lose eight to 10 pounds in three or four days. Easy, very easy in water. If I cut all my carbs out, I'll lose eight to 10 pounds in three or four days. And then I can gain eight to 10 by just bumping them well, way the hell up. I mean, we just came back from Florida and I ate out a lot, didn't even eat that bad, but there's a lot of sodium and everything I'm eating. And I gained like nine pounds. <laughs> this is like a three day period. Right. And it's like, and it wasn't body. I yeah. just have muscle. I have a lot of muscle uh, that, that can store. And so things. do you. I mean, based off your right. body weight and you, where you're yeah. at, you have a lot of muscle. And so when you got a lot of muscle like that, the I mean, my mine swings daily eight to nine pounds. So it's, a, wow. and that's just when you yeah. have these big, dense, mu- big muscle bellies that can fill up with lots of glycogen and lots of water that, that mm-hmm. does that a lot. And so when you start bumping calories and you see this little fluctuation of five to eight pounds, it's not fat. It's like, you just filled up all the muscle bellies. So I, I mean, I would want you away from the scale, just stay the course, keep trying to reverse diet. A good goal is to get you up to about 3000 calories. Start hanging out with bodybuilders too. It'll make you <laughs> yeah. feel better. Seriously. Start hanging out with I some hang out with bodybuilders. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, I hang out with all of them, men. strong men, yeah. power lifters, bodybuilders, oh, good, CrossFit good. guys. Oh, yeah. there you go. There you go. But, but the concern is, but my concern is I don't know my true maintenance because my weight does fluctuate so much. So do you think I should try to find my maintenance before I keep increasing calories or keep increasing calories so I don't really see a huge fluctuation? Well, eat, eat like you normally do, track it for a week or two, and your maintenance is right mm. around there. That's it. Without you okay. trying to gain or lose. Just I, and, where and, and a good way that I would advise to do that, um, especially if you have good habits and behaviors around eating whole foods and you, you get yeah. your protein. I do. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you do, then what I'm going to tell you is, Alyssa, I want you to eat every time you're hungry and just make it a protein centric meal. And then let's see where that lands and let's just track it for a week and see where it lands after. And we, we won't look at each day to day, but as seven days as a whole, what did you average per day eating when you're hungry, eating whole foods, staying diet, like making your food for a week. And then let's see where you mm-hmm. land. And that will probably give you a really good number of what your maintenance is probably at. And then from there we go, okay, it looks like you land right around 2,300 calories. Let's shoot for 2,500 a day. And that's now your goal is just be consistent with that for a couple of weeks. And then we'll go up to 27 and then 29 and then 3,100. And that would be the goal is to just keep increasing that way, focusing on the gym and the strength, not caring about the scale, just going off how you feel and how you perform in the gym until we really get those calories high. You can definitely handle over 3,000 calories. Definitely. I know that that you're, and that's what your body wants for all that muscle. So give it to it. Mm Mm-hmm. Just take Do you time. guys think that 180 grams and to like 190 grams for me is okay? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, like yeah. if I'm over, I'm like two. I'm like two ten. That's fine. Yeah, 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 you're fine. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. fine. yeah, that's fine. That's good. That's good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'll do, and I've been I've been tracking for years, and I would say like I've never really like fallen off. So like I kind of know my daily stuff, but I'm gonna do what you said, Adam. I'm gonna like ease off the scale stuff just because I track everything. I weigh everything. And even when I go out, like you said, say like I make good decisions. Yeah. So I make protein centered meals. 
but I'll come back from like being out of town for a week and my weight's up like seven pounds. I'm yeah, like, yeah, what the hell? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, you, you have a yeah, lot of muscle. So I, you're, you're, you're not, yeah. you're not a, a, a tiny little one Oh three person walking I'm around. Petite, you've got, yeah. Yeah, you've got, you've got a body <laughs> and you've got a lot of muscle right. and it absolutely mm -hmm. is going to fluctuate by a big number like that. I mean, it's, okay. I, I, I wanted to make sure that was normal. The yeah. fluctuations is what was alarming to me. I wanted to make sure it was normal. No, no, no. Fine. For yeah. you, it's very normal. Yeah, you're fine. You're, you're carrying a lot mm -hmm. more muscle than the average person is period man or mm -hmm. woman you have a lot of muscle for even like oh, a man there's you probably have more muscle on your body than a lot of dudes that are walking around five eight and 160 pounds mm -hmm. you you have you will fluctuate more than he does because you have more muscle than yeah. he does so it yeah, is, I it's really appreciate that. Very, it's very normal. You got and it's a good thing, I, okay? You're doing you're, you're, yeah. all the all <laughs> the all things good. that you listed when you were yeah. telling us is like <clears throat> all good, all good, yeah. all good, all good, all good. All I mean, everything's positive. Yeah. So it's just the psychological <laughs> part we got to work yeah. on. That's mm -hmm. it. Right, and um, I I feel way less anxious after this conversation. So good. thank good. you. Good, good. Got it. Check, um, check back and with I us. Want please. And I'm in the forum. You guys did give me access to the forum. Um, but I have a weird question because when you guys sent it to me, I had told you I don't have Facebook. So you said some people have made Facebooks just for the forum. Yeah. yeah. So do you see like, do people have their pictures in there or do some people have like, no. know, like a fake profile? Yeah, just yeah, so some people, some people just have a blank just profile. A blank one. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Well. Yeah. I wanted to make sure because I don't want people adding me. Like, because yeah. I think it's really me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm very low deny. profile. No, you could, yeah. you could put, uh, you know, a picture. Of your... I'll just put mind pump only. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. There, there you go. go. There you go. Put a picture of Justin. Yeah. yeah. No, no, just right. yeah. I'll represent but, you. But check um, check in with us. I would I would like to hear as this goes and then and then allow us, let's not wait a year for us to keep encouraging you to go the right way. Cause of course, I I know how stuff like this works, that that those insecurities will creep back up. And I don't want you to, you know, uh, divert or change the course when you're doing great. So check in with us when you it. have those moments of, oh guys, I I feel this way and allow us to help you stay the course because I think you're in a great place right now. You just need, you need to feed that body more. It needs, it needs more calories. And I understand why it's difficult, but allow us to help you through that process. I appreciate it. And you guys have helped me. Like, like I said, I've been listening for over four years. I've been doing maps for over three years, the maps programs. And when I called in last year, I had a QL strain. So I did old time, loved it. Oh, then I did oh, performance. Mm -hmm. Then I did, I healed my strain. I feel great. Then I did anabolic advance. Then I did, um, took a break. Cause I kind of was feeling like a little, like the strain was coming back. So I did like rehab focus stuff and trigger sessions. And then I came back to anabolic and my bench, like I can bench like 155 for three yes, now. Yes. So I was like, and I was doing 135 for strong. one. Like I couldn't even do that. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, I'm hitting numbers. Like my back feels solid. I yeah. feel strong in my Good squat, job. deeper. Like everything is like, I feel tight and strong and yeah. stable. The yeah. stability was the problem. Good. So I really appreciate it, you guys. And like, this was a really tough topic for me to vote. Like I'm live. Like I came live because I wanted to make sure like, people other people dealing with this could hear me yep. um especially as a young female like i don't want other women to be in this position so i really appreciate you guys talking me through it live and i know other people would hear it so you got awesome. it i really appreciate yeah, it i appreciate you calling in yes. yeah and i'll, I'll keep i'll keep You're in touch with you guys it. for sure thank All you right, yeah. thank you thank you yeah thank you guys have a good one Bye 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 yeah, the, the you know strong as fuck. Bro. Yeah, one of the so, yeah. I, I mean, I've not, have you ever trained a female client like a bench one fifty five? I three? mean, I, she actually she is not actually. I, remember. I wish of, we could find her picture. One, one of my one yeah. of my clients that I had for a really long time has a, a very had a very similar body composition look as her and everything like that. Yeah. Um, super strong too, super strong lower body. Like she could stack the leg press. We could squat yeah. two twenty five. Yeah. She, she was benching for muscle. Yeah, yeah. They just and that, I think that's the thing that happens is you start comparing yourself to other people. Yeah. And you, she's in a muscle wise, she's in a whole other league than ninety five yeah. plus yeah. percent of. Yeah. It's a blessing. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I get it. By the way, I get it. It's, she lost. I remember she lost a hundred pounds when she was uh, from seventeen to twenty one. Yeah. So there's that fear of the weight and the you know body. Sure. So it's, so it's it's ingrained in there. I get. It. I totally get it, mm -hmm. but that's the thing she's going to have to focus on. Um, the, she's not she, she's not going to logic her way out of it. At least she she has the self awareness. I mean, as, that she listed all these things out and she recognizes all these positive things. You know, yep. my hair is good, my skin is good, yeah, my energy yeah, yeah. is good, my libido is yeah. good. I'm strong. Like she's been listening. Yeah. She's been listening. Yeah, yeah. It's early access to Black Friday. All maps programs, all bundles, sixty percent off. Also, 
If you get a bundle, you'll get 10 entries to win. If you buy a program, you'll get five entries to win. Everything else, one entry to win. Five days at the Mind Pump House in Park City. It's got a gym. It's got a cold dip. It's got a sauna. It's got red light therapy. It's all kinds of great stuff. Five-day vacation hooked up with $1,000 for travel accommodations as well. Early access, Black Friday. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code Black Friday for the 60% off and the entries to win uh, a vacation at the Mind Pump Park City House. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Robert from Idaho. What's hey, up, Robert? Hey, what's going on, Robert? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. Good. Um, yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'll just, uh, first off, I just want to start by saying the thanks that everybody gives. Um, I mean, you guys have definitely changed my understanding of the metabolic process and and fitness in general. But most importantly, I, I want to thank you guys for being able to be vulnerable and share your own weaknesses and insecurities with everybody out there. I think that says a lot more about strength than how much weight you can pick up. Um, and so I just really appreciate that. And I think it's part of why you've been so successful. Appreciate that, man. Right thank on, you. Man. So uh, let me update you on my questions changed only slightly since since I sent it in. Um, I'm 42 years old. Um, I got into karate about a year and a half ago with my daughter. Um, some background on me. I used to be a gymnast in high school and I did other sports like cheerleading, hockey and wrestling. Uh, but after high school, I put on a lot of weight, pretty much stopped activity in general. And that didn't change for uh, many years until about uh, 12 years ago when my daughter was born, it gave me the sort of spark and um, was a catalyst for wanting to do to do better and be better. So at that time, I started running. I started um, doing Spartan races, doing everything I could to get fit and healthy, as well as um, focusing on education. I lost about 70 pounds um, over a couple of years doing that. And uh, when got my personal training cer certification, finished my master's degree in psychology. Um, and then when my daughter was old enough for us to do uh, adult uh, karate classes together about a year and a half ago, we started doing that. Now, I am I feel like I'm still in pretty good shape and I, I still keep up with all the younger people there. But one thing I want to focus on is figuring out what I can do to increase the power and the speed and the height of my kicks. I am a bit older than most of the people there. I've got good proprioception. I'm actually pretty good in sparring and in, in tournaments. I've placed pretty well. Um, but hip mobility specifically is kind of where I think my, my struggle is. Um, I do a lot of uh, static stretching and some mobility work almost every day. And it's definitely gotten better. You, you, I mean, in the training, I've gotten significantly better than where I started, but I, I feel like I've hit a wall and, and that hasn't changed since I sent in my question. It's maybe improved a little bit since then, but it's definitely still a struggle. So I just want to know training wise, what I can do to continue to improve that and maybe break through that sort of plateau that I've hit. Good question. So when it comes to range of motion, flexibility, mobility, progressive overload uh, applies just like it does with strength training. So um, especially when you're looking for uh, flexibility, okay? So two things. One, nothing's going to get you to kick faster and harder than practicing your kicks more often. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure your instructors probably already told you that. That's like the absolute best thing you could do is practice them often. Strength training will give you some power, but make sure you combine it with frequent practice. Otherwise, you'll start to lose some of your technique uh, because if you did get build muscle but didn't practice with the new muscle, then you're just going to be more awkward and you'll lose speed. So you'll be bigger but lose speed and then the power you know, stays the same or whatever. But mobility and, and static stretching, uh, however much you've been doing it, you would just increase the volume and the frequency of it if you've hit a plateau. So long as you're not overtrained. Now, stretching, typically it's harder to overtrain with static stretching. Uh, people can get away with a lot. Mobility, you know, you, you know, same, similar, like you could do a lot of it. So how much were you doing before? How much have you been doing? Um, so I do, we have an uh, hour and a half karate classes twice a week. And then I've been doing, I ran through uh, anabolic doing the three days a week thing. And that's pretty much been the extent of my training other than stretching. Uh, right now I've finished anabolic and I've been doing HIT, uh, MAPS HIT. 
Um, and so I, on the off days, I've, I have noticed those mobility sessions are really good. Um, especially like the 90, 90 progressions yeah. have been really awesome. Um, what, one thing I haven't done, I haven't tried any sort of like weighted stretching or anything like that. So I'm not how, really sure if that how, would be a good step. Yeah. How often are you doing the stretching and the mobility? So I do, uh, first thing in the morning, I do like just a static stretching, um, and then as I'm watching TV later at night with the wife, I'll just sit down and do the mobility stuff pretty much every night. Okay. And then the static stretching for how long? 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. You double it, add another session. Okay. That, yeah. That'll, okay. that'll get you through this plateau for I, sure. I, I think too, the, the thing to, and Sal said it already, but I just want to reemphasize this, how important this is. Cause this was a big, this was a big part of me really opening my hips up, getting wow. to a place where I could get this real deep squat and I couldn't break 90 just, you know, five years ago or whatever. And a lot of that was applying that same like thought process. Like I, I don't just get in there and go through the motions of doing the mobility. I'm try every time I I'm doing mobility, I'm trying to gain a fraction of an inch more access. You know, like you'll see like, uh, and you might I don't know if you've seen me doing my series right now, where I'm getting down in my ninety ninety, and I'll take the back foot. And I'll lift it up by myself, right? I'll, I'll try and lift it up. And then let's say it only gets off the ground six inches. Then I'll reach back and I'll assist it higher and, and bring it to a range that I can't control yet. And then I'll work on trying to hold it there. And so, uh, and, and that is going to help you get gain more access. So when you do the mobility sessions, um, have an intent of I'm going to get further today than I did the day before and really approach it that way. Typically what happens to people when they, when they get kind of stuck in this place and they're not feeling like they're gaining more access is because they're, they're just kind of going through the stretches and it's more of a relaxing thing yeah. than it is like trying, like if you're doing good, like if you're doing a good job of this, you'll actually sweat. Yeah. Like you'll, I mean, right. you'll, you'll be, it'll be that kind of an intense mobility session. So really, uh, increase the frequency of it. I personally, I don't know about you guys, but I would love like him doing like a maps 15 with every time he does math, 15, like a mobility session. Yeah. Yeah. That would be uh, f like, so now it's, <clears throat> so it's, it. it's going to scale back the strength training uh, and still okay. plenty for you, plenty of strength training right. to keep all the muscle you have. You're not going to lose anything. So following a MAPS 15 cool. protocol and then hyper-focused on a mobility session that's 15, 20 minutes with that intent I'm talking about every day that you train and, and just put it with that workout. Have you, have you done MAPS performance yet? Um, I have maps performance, but I haven't started okay. it yet. I was, I was doing hit first and then I was going to move into performance. Yeah. I, I bring that up because, so I agree with Adam in terms of the intent and in when you're doing these mobility sessions to really like, you know, focus in on, uh, tensing intrinsically and being able to kind of push that last little bit of inch and range of motion. Um, I do feel like dynamic stretching would do you a lot of good in terms of like getting up and moving. And, and we do have that in our mass performance program in the mobility sessions. And so like if we're doing lateral lunge hops and, you know, it's a lot more dynamic, your, your body needs to also kind of go through like real range of motion and not just in, in, in a static pose that you're trying to kind of, you know, manipulate um, you know, internal, external rotation of just the hips. Like I want you like full kinetic motion. Uh, and, and so that, that there's elements of that in there and there's walking stretches and there's, you know, more of dynamic focus with that. So you might get a, a it, it might interrupt it just enough. So you, you it stimulates something new. For this you. is what, that's what I'm thinking. Justin was, I was actually thinking of him running maps 15, but basically taking the mobility sessions for performance, From performance. and yes. and tacking that on to his, his maps 15 workout. I Absolutely. think that you, if you, so do you have 15 or performance? Do you have those programs? What program do you have? I have performance. I don't have 15. Okay. So we'll yeah, send you map. We'll send you map 15. I want you okay. to do the advanced version of, of map 15. And then right after every day you do map 15, it's only two exercises. You're going to do two lifting exercises, then go right okay. into the mobility session and literally do the, mob or you could do the mobility first. Yeah. It doesn't, either one's fine. Now, now but, static stretching wise, I just, just, just double it. You just double okay. it. And static yeah. stretching, you know, does have value so long as it's combined with movement. That's why the practice is going to be really important. When when doing the lifts for uh, MAPS 15, would it be ideal to focus more on full range of motion with a little bit less weight? Always. Um, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. always mm -hmm. the case. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. always the yeah. case. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yep. But I think that that paired with the mobility sessions from Prime, uh, I think that, and then also just having that intent that we were talking about going into it, I think you're going to see some nice progress from that alone. Awesome. 
Yeah, thank you guys so much. I appreciate this. You right got on. it, man. Right, right on, Robert. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> hey, why don't right, you, uh, you why don't you uh, shout out your podcast while you're on here? Since uh, you got oh yeah, on. sure. Um, it's the Dungeons Dragons and Psychology Podcast. It's uh-huh. all about uh, role playing games and the psychological benefits that it has in our life, and you can pretty much find it anywhere. Right awesome. On. Right See on. Man. Thank you. Good luck, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Keep doing what you're doing. You got it, dude. Yeah, that's cool. Good question. Yeah, you know, um, uh, the, the other part, I mean, we kind of glazed over this because he understands it, but when you're in a sport and you want to get better at a skill in that sport, and, and I know strength training is important, obviously, mm-hmm. and workouts are important, uh, but nothing uh, is more important than practicing the actual skill for yeah. improving that skill. Right? Well, so- I think, too, like it, it takes, um, you know, your own effort to then break off uh, from what is designed in terms of like, you know, when you go to practice, the coach has an idea of what you need. You need to have individual time. Also, yeah. In, in terms of like that specific skill of like improving his kick and like he needs to like yep. go through that range of motion dynamically. I, uh, you know, brought my point up because I caught myself doing this just recently. Uh, because you can get in this habit of, you know, you're doing your mobility sessions and you kind of just go to the end range of motion you have. And even I, I connect, yeah. you know, I connect and intensify a little bit, You're but really putting, but when I was trying to really gain more access to my squad and that was like, I had that, I went in with that intent that year. When I approached those sessions, it, each time I was trying to get a little bit for like really to yeah. the point where I'd be sweating. And I yeah. haven't been having mobility sessions where I'm sweating right now. I've been just kind of going through the motions, which it's not bad. Like that's going to help. Right. But it's not the same as I'm trying to gain new access, yeah. gaining new access to your point. It's like progressively overloading for building muscle. It's like you can go in and just touch the weights and always stay the same way and keep a healthy body. But if you're trying to progress, that's where the progressive overload comes in with strength training the same thing applies in the stretching department of like gaining new access or the mobility department when it comes to gaining more access or a greater range of motion you've got to apply that same kind of intensity of you are pushing yourself to a new end range every time you do it our next caller is chase from nebraska what's up chase what's going on chase how's it going guys good man what's happening what's happening well so first i guess i got to start with the introduction um Thank you guys for all you do. Uh, if it if it wasn't for your podcast, I don't know if I'd be a trainer today. Um, but basically, what my question is: so I just started my own business about six weeks ago, and um, basically, I'm I'm located in in the basement of this building. It's 15 stories tall, and it's got a lot of law firms and marketing firms and and businesses of that sort. So it's got people that I know can afford training. Mm-hmm. And I'm really trying to like tap into those people first and build my business first through people in the building before I kind of venture out and, and, and try to build, build, build business outside of the building. Um, a couple other caveats, like the building is very professional. So like, I'm not allowed to do like a body fat percentage booth in the lobby or anything. Um, I'm not allowed to put any flyers up around the building that, that lets people know about, um, free classes or anything like that. The really only access I have to people is, um, that work in the building is through like our manager or building manager. I can send any email I want out through her and it goes to everybody in the building. That's awesome. Um, so basically, yeah, that's it. I'm just looking to build business in the building first. And I just would like your guys' advice, what you guys would do. Chase, I, are you I the love- only fitness place in that whole building? Yeah, bro, oh, bro, go. you got Let's yourself. Go. Yeah, you're in, you're in a you're in an incredible position. That's all right, right, first of all, who's the gatekeeper? Who controls or says yes or no to whether or not you could do a body fat test booth, or whether you could do a fitness fair, or whether you could whatever? Who who's the person that controls that? Um, that's a great question. So, who owns the building? Really, it comes down to like the building owner and yeah. building manager. Okay, those yeah. are your new cl- those are bre- those are your new clients. You're going to train them for free. <laughs> yeah, right. like like that's yeah, where you start. In. That's right. Whoever allow whoever's the person that can say yes or no, I would approach them and I would train them for free. And That's I would right. say, hey, hey, you know, I, you know, the new trainer in the bottom, you know, at the bottom there, I would love to train you for free. Here's what I do. Let me take you through some workouts. Where do you work out at? You you have access to my studio with all this equipment. If you want to work out on your own, that's the person that you need to build the best relationship with. They're the one that's the gatekeeper. That's going to allow you to talk to all these other people. And then from there, what I would do is I would start by offering 
a fitness fair or something that is uh, health related to the employees in the in the building. And then I would start with, and this is after you build a relationship, you know, a few few sessions or whatever. Hey, you know, I'd really like to offer, uh, you know, the service to the rest of the of the employees in here. Do you know anybody that would be interested? Would you like to bring anybody in? But always, always train these people for free. These are your priority clients. And the more they like you, the easier this is going to be for you. Chase, are you are you in our course yet? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not in the course now. Okay, so that's first mistake. Okay, second one. This is something that uh, our friend Alex Hormozzi says really well. I absolutely love that, that you are you are at the learn stage of your career, not the earn stage of your career. You are just getting started. Imagine if Mind Pump, when the four of us started this business, if as we were putting out content that we were always concerned about how much money did we make for that hour we spent creating that podcast or, or how much money were we going to make? If we, like none of that, if we didn't even care. It was we were coming in late hours, working after our other jobs, whatever, to put out good, free, valuable content to then attract people to us that would then lead us to how are we going to monetize this? You're in the same thing just in the real world. You are there right now. You are at the learn phase of your process. So every time you are talking to a person, you're working with a client, you are getting educated, you are chasing mastery, you're improving your skills. So approach it that way. So every minute you have that you don't have somebody in front of you, you are losing time, you are losing out on your you chasing mastery. So get people in front of you, even if it's for free. Yeah. That is probably the biggest challenge that young trainers have when they first start is this I got to make money. And they, they're so concerned about or that. Or they think well, about marketing and advertising and all these other things that are way less. Because effective. just just going after these people that are in this building and starting to train them on your own time and not making any money is going to give you a lot of the answers, is going to give you the connections, is going to build the relationships, is going to tell you what is going to be the best way I'm going to monetize right here. I, that might be you holding courses once a month that cost five dollars to show up and you can get a hundred people to show up i it may be you doing like a stretching mobility class it could on be saturday you, you I don't visiting even, the different floors uh and you're going in to do a talk on whatever and it's good they like it because it helps with their health insurance costs I mean, there's a lot of different options what's your relationship now with the building manager um i mean i know her um i've met her a couple times i don't really see her a whole lot um but i mean i have like her email and phone number and okay. all those things. Okay, perfect. Here's what you're going to do. And and, and and be honest. The best possible thing you do is be totally honest. So you, what's her name? Jessica. All right. You're going to reach out to Jessica and you'll be like, hey, Jessica, this is Chase, the trainer that's at the in the basement uh, with the fitness studio. Look, I'm brand new here. Here's what I want to do. I want to take you out to lunch. I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to buy it for you because I want to talk to you about offering to train you for free. And here's why. I want to show you how good I am at what I do and I'll train you forever for free. And hopefully, you know, everybody in this building, if you think I do a good job, you'll refer me. If not, no big deal, but I'm going to give you free personal training. As long as I'm in this building, uh, do you work out currently now? And be just totally honest about it. Uh, let me take you out to lunch. Let's talk about this. I'm not going to charge you anything. I'm going to pay for lunch and I'm going to take you through some workouts. Here's my experience. Here's the things that I, that I, that I'm good at. And, and then if she says yes, you just be a damn good trainer. And then watch what happens. Like when you have a client that you do a good job with, they will refer you without even having to ask. I mean, I think I think the advice Sal's giving with the, the building manager is probably one of the most odd. But even if that falls flat or she denies you, it doesn't work out. Don't let that that advice. No, the next person would be just, the, it, it, like. There's going to be there's there's the top guy or girl on floor seven. There's the the best person and the most vocal person on floor. Whoever nine. checks people in when they walk yeah, into the building, just, the person at the front desk. At, I would train that person at for this, free. At this point, you just need to get bodies in front of you, and you need to start helping these people. So we're mm -hmm. just like when we came into this, it was our goal is to just get our content out there, get people, let people hear what we have to give them and they'll find out how good we are when they take our advice. And then we will be able to monetize and all the other stuff will snowball later. The focus isn't right away. How am I going to make money? What are we going to sell? It's let's go prove to people I can help them and I'm good and I can add value to their lives. When you are in a building with that many people and you are the only, the only game in town, you have got it. This is a huge opportunity. Huge. And is there is there any bulletin board or anything in there? Is there like a place you can? Place He's got email. He can email everybody. Brochures or like you know get 
like some poster with like the tags you can pull your number off of like anything like that in terms of just awareness that you're in the building and you exist i mean imagine if you did this okay you uh if you got access to, they allow you to email the entire people all the people in the building imagine yeah. if every day you gave free good advice yeah. in that email don't but ask for anything you just give them content yeah, yeah but before you do that like i said the bi the building manager part of her job is to make sure that the tenants are happy and that they're paying their rent and so you can literally like the, the lunch or yeah, whatever you like set up with her service is you're like, Hey, I'd like to set up a lunch with you. This is in regards to me staying here for a long time. I love the building. I'd also like to offer you like free fitness stuff and, and workouts, but really I want to talk about how I can stay here as long as possible. She's going to be interested in that because it's a lunch, it's fitness. Everybody's interested in fitness and she wants to make sure everybody's happy. How did you but get here's, that building? Here's all the people, by the way, that I would talk to. She's the obvious one. She's the building manager. Is there a parking attendant uh, where, where the parking garage is? I would offer that person training. Is there somebody checking people in as they're walking in? I would offer that person training. All of the all of the gatekeepers of the building are the people that I would offer the training to for free because they're the ones that talk to everybody. Like the person that's taking the tickets of the parking, they start to like you. Next thing you know, they're going to refer you people who park their cars. This is, those are all the people I would focus on. And then what you do is you do a damn good job with them. And then after you train Jessica for four or five workouts. Hey, I got this idea. I, I would like to give free fitness tips once a week to all of the tenants in the building. And she's gonna be like, what do you mean? Well, I'm just going to give out free fitness stuff. I'm not going to ask for anything. I would just, I think I, I'm really, health is something that gets me really excited. And every week, once a week, I'm going to send out either a recipe or an exercise or something in regards to fitness and health. I'm sure that's okay with you, but I'd like to ask your permission. What do you think? Yeah. And she likes you already because you're working out with her. And she'd be like, and then you marry her because you do that. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I mean, that's, that's it right there because you're in a gold mine. I mean, based on what you're telling me, you're literally at the bottom of a gold mine. So if you position this properly, you got yourself a, a long-term career and, there. You, and you are, you're at the learn phase. And so this is, you need to be putting people in front of you and, and, and don't think like, it doesn't always have to be training someone to build muscle and burn body fat as part of this job. Like building relationships is so powerful. Sometimes you're not going to, not everybody's going to want to work out with you. Not everybody's going to train. That's okay. Like these gatekeepers, for example, I, every gym that I had an opportunity to work at. So there was three of them in my career at, when I worked for 24 hour fitness, as soon as I got to a new club, what I did was I would always, my front desk girls that made minimum wage, that scanned every person in, I brought them every time I came into work, a Jamba Juice. And I became the their favorite. Why? Just because I, I stopped to care. I did something for them. I didn't ask for anything in return. But guess what? Every time somebody came to the front desk and wanted to buy personal training, who do you think they called to come over and help that person out? There was 15 other trainers that could get called to do that. But it was me because I built. The, I took the time to build the relationship with those people. So Sal's point about the, the person who's doing the parking or the gatekeepers, yeah. like, relationship building it doesn't always have to be because maybe somebody doesn't want to train with you but befriend them do things for them add value to their life like that's a part of your business now is networking is building relationships and so do not catch yourself sitting down in that basement by yourself for longer than five or ten minutes your ass needs oh to my be God, out never in your building talking and networking with people if you are not helping somebody and changing their life from a fitness perspective you need to be building relationships in that yeah. because if you become the guy with all the answers related to nutrition, exercise, chronic pain, stretching. You'll all be overloaded things. with clients. You'll ha you have you have you have a built-in <laughs> top of the funnel right here in that building. But you need to go become that guy, and you become that guy by building relationships, by adding value to all of them, yep. and not thinking about how much money am I going to make for this. Like, no, let me go prove. I can help these people, and that is your mission right now. And along the way, you are going to learn. You are all going to get better. You're going to get to the place where you become a master at your craft. And guess what? They will start to build the leads for you. They yep. will be yep. the ones that tell you how you should monetize and make money. And get in our course. Quit fucking around. <laughs> Sounds good. It this all is, makes sense. This is I, a, this is the stuff we talk about, bro. This yeah. is what because the whole yeah. co our course is not about teaching you what NASM taught you with biomechanics and nutrition. It's about this right here. It's about how to how to build, how to scale a business. That the things that all these certifications lack is this part right here. But yet, it seems to be the most important part for it coaches is. and trainers. That is the entire focus of our course. Sounds good, and yeah, that that's pretty much what I thought you guys would say. Um, I mean, cause I offered so far, I offered like a free, like starting strength class to everybody in the building, but, um, 
it was only done through email. Like nobody had a face to, yeah. to got to go meet to put the class with. And I got uh, like one person to show up for the four classes. Like that was it. So, oh, good. And yeah. then you should continue to train them for free. Whoever it was. Yeah. I mean, did okay. they, did they leave? Are they gone? No, they loved it. Uh, and yeah, but what now what? Uh, well, we still got one more free class. To do. Okay. And you're going to keep training them if they're in that building. Like yeah. this is what you're going to do for now. Keep doing this. And, and before you know it, you'll be the mayor of the building. You're the fitness mayor of the building, and then you'll have you'll have no shortage of clients. Yeah, you will. You'll be all fine. Right. This is, by the way, how did you get uh, access to be in a big building like that and have it all to yourself on the bottom floor? How, did you know somebody, or how did that work out? Uh, yeah, it's not it's not what you know; it's who you know. And that's right. I knew somebody that was in the building, and uh, it's it's an unbelievable opportunity. Yeah, yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, good for you. It man. is. It is. Go meet. You know what? Is there like a a big cafeteria where everybody eats? I was just thinking that. I just sit in there all day. Um. No, there, there's no cafeteria. There's just, there's just a lobby, and then they're putting. Um, Where does everybody they're eat? They're building a cafe like in the lobby right now. So I'm sure there'll be a place where a lot of people go for lunch. But it's just it, it won't be open for another yeah. three or four months. You, you, you should never, ever, ever, ever be in your studio unless you're with a client. Like yeah. I, I never, yeah. I would be everywhere else but that studio. Yeah, yeah. Build relationships right now, dude. That building's so big. There's so many people in there that. There's a handful of gold mines in there. You don't even know it. Totally. That, and and that's just talking about in the building because guess what? There's a handful of people in there that have a friend or have a, a, a husband or a wife. No, you're literally or a family you're, member. You're who, li if you do this right, you're sixty days, thirty to sixty days away from having a full book. No joke. Gotcha. Keep keep, right. pe keep people in front of you, Chase. Go get it, bro. All right. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All right, man. All right, man. Yeah, that's like, and I gave them. I'm being conservative. I, I mean, I, I think I could within a week or two, uh, I'd, I'd be filling my books up just from sure. sitting around being talking visible. to people. Yeah, I mean, when, yeah. when you know, when I when I had my studio, when I first opened my studio, it wasn't in a building; like it was in a shopping center. You better believe by day three, every single business manager, owner, the property manager, everybody I was trying to get to work out with me. Mm -hmm. And then it just became a referral factory. People the, just started referring the to The trainers that understand this really well are trainers that had the opportunity to work for a big box, like 24-hour fitness, life fitness, one of those big gyms. And then they went and decided to go buy on their own. Yes. And, they, and it fucking rocks their world because all of a sudden- <laughs> They don't have you, all these people- I don't even work it myself. You don't, you don't even realize how valuable it was that you were in a building where 2,000 people worked out every single day Day, and you had access to be able to make contacts, make relationships, and potentially get those people in front of you. Now you decided, oh, I'm going to go do this on my own out of my garage, or I'm going to rent a, a space, and you got nobody around you, yeah, and you, you got to go you, get you all got those tumbleweeds. People. I mean, yes. everything you guys said, and then I would just be in uniform, like on their way out the door. Hi, my name is, and yeah. introduce myself. Absolutely, yeah. everybody. Yeah, totally. at this point, he's just got to go build relationships and make uh, make contacts. But I, I mean, literally, I would look at every single person that greets uh, anybody who walks in the building. So like the parking attendant, the, yeah. the, the person at the front desk. You got to be the mayor of the building That's at this it. point. You know, you know, it's, it, the reason why I brought up the podcast because it's the same formula. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if when we first started, we go, okay, here we got this podcast. Like, okay, how are we going to sell people maps programs? Like nobody's listening yet. You know, yeah. like how do we sell? How Get do we make money? Get them to listen. Got to earn yeah. their trust. That's right. And that means, and we're not sitting there counting, man, we've worked 10 hours this week and we didn't make any money. It's like, bro, that's just part of it. We yeah. are, we, even though with all of our experience, when we started this business. You just put the seed in. You got to water we, it we are back. We are back at the learn phase. We are not at the earn phase. It's a new medium. It's a new job. It's a new career. Now let's go out and go prove that we're good at what we can do, prove that we can go add value to people's lives, prove that we know what we're doing, and guess what? Eventually, the money will come. That's, That's the it. same attitude. That's it. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible. But not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.